Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, I can able access into you. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So let's go to our file name over here from our sample case studies folder naming called data analysis. OK, so when you open that file, you will be finding a huge data set over here coming up like this. So kindly confirm everybody in the chat box. You have got the same worksheet opened in front of your screen. Yes, it is open. Great. Yes. OK. Can you drop me a message, people? So I got one confirmation from Anirudh. How about others? Yes, that is already. All right, now let me take you through the data first, what we have with us so that everybody can connect with it, and then we'll understand what is the objective and then how to deal with this thing will be working together. So take an example, suppose morning 930, I have dropped into office. And immediately my boss called me, Pravas, please come to my cabin. I need to discuss something with you. I went in, then what he's saying, he is telling that Prabhas, I was just looking through the reports. I, I was going through our monthly reports, whatever we are submitting to the management. And I found that there is a quality of information missing. It seems as if some ready-made numbers we have downloaded from SAP or ERP system, and we are presenting the same to the our management. And in fact, I was there in the last monthly review meeting, and I found that, observed that none of the audience were quite happy looking at the reports. So let's do something different this time. So what is telling me now that please get me last three years revenue data, last three years revenue data from SAP. Let's do something different this time. Well, I gave my respective T code in my SAP system and I got near about one lakh records of last three years revenue data in this format. So what is the format? Let's have a discussion. Name of the customer is there, product type, whatever the products we are manufacturing that product type categories are there product is i mean description these are the different different types of products we are dealing with so basically in one line if you want to say i have taken a manufacturing industry or a car manufacturing company's data naming called suppose say tata motors now just relate in this way that we are the employees of our Tata Motors company. OK, now our boss has asked us to do something like this. And when I download the report, it comes in this format like name of customer is there. These are the different car segments we are making. And these are the different different car names. You could see all our commercial vehicles or passenger cars over here and salesperson. Whatever we have just engaged to generate our revenue, those names are available. These are the different regions. We export our products. That name is also there. Order date is nothing but the invoice date or billing column or billing date column. You can see sales in terms of US dollar. We are making the billing. You can consider INR if you wish. No problem. Year of incurrence of sale month and the quarter and intermediate channel partner. If any, that name is also available. It's a huge data you see. All right. Now when I produce this data in front of my boss, what he is saying to us, this data is of no use for me. Just do me a favor. I want to see a simple report out of this. During the last three years, how much revenue we have made by selling what are the products we have sold to a customer? I want to have a report. So basically in one line, if you want to say product wise, during the last three years, how much revenue we have made, my boss wants to see. So we know one thing. When you have a huge data, if you want to prepare a summary out of that or the data in tabular format, we have a data summarizing tool called pivot table or pivot table. All of you agree? Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes. Now, 
the very first question we have to ask ourselves people whether my data is ready for pivot we never pay attention to that and this is the reason why we face a lot of challenges in the next level so we are not going to commit that mistake anymore so the first thing is whenever you happen to create a pivot out of any sort of data people you must satisfy three validation rules rule number 1 the data must contain a field header without column headers pivot is not possible and remember that none of the column header name should be duplicate all the column header has to be unique column if you want to retain customer in two columns you can but you should name it as customer 1 customer 2 you cannot have the same name the column header okay this is our rule number 1 rule number 2 the amount of data whatever we have received downloaded or captured none of the cell should have a blank one like there should not be any blank cell inside the data set so how will i confirm there is a blank cell or not the best example if you remember in our day 2 we discussed something about data clean one so select your data go for control g you will be getting this go to dialog box where you will be getting your special and there we have to choose blanks and when you select blanks and click okay do you all getting messages like this no cells were found kindly confirm control a control g special blanks okay are you getting the same no cells yes. were found yeah yes. right yes. Yes. so yes. it's a confirmation that we do not have a blank cell inside the data set so rule number 2 is also satisfied now coming back to rule number 3 ensure that when you're dealing with the data none of your columns should contain over here as a merge cells so no column should have a merge cells because most of the time what it happens people we have a very bad practice we select multiple cells we merge them we create a header see that is meant for display not for the calculations because most of our excel functionalities doesn't read our merge data so it is always better make a thumb rule avoid using the merge cells if you want to go for any kind of calculations now having said this all these three rules are satisfied our data is ready for next level no doubt but if you remember i told you the day 2 our other data cleansing activity when we are operating with the data clean two sheet i told you something whenever you download the data from sap or erp there are two areas you will be always face i mean facing the challenge number column will not be in number format date column will not be in date format so those two columns are very essential to check it out just see in our case the order date column if you look at the billing date the first date whatever you have keep your cursor and select the rest now the question is how to confirm whether our order date is having the date in proper date format anybody so uh, control 3 uh, control 3 what it does uh, control 3 is actually provide time maintain control shift three very good old analytics right? very uh, good see i told you yeah. if you remember in our day 1 itself to convert any format to date format control yeah. shift and 3 so if you change. go and just operate control shift 3 is it changing the format yes so it's a simple message for us our date is in proper date format that's why the said changes are happening if this changes were not happening we should have gone for our data text to column next next general to text or text to date general to date anything we should have done that well so this is what we have understood how to confirm our date is there in proper date format all right control shift 3 similarly next is the billing column the invoice amount sales usd column keep your cursor in your first billing value and select the rest now the question is how to confirm whether our number column is there in number format any control shift oh no no no, no. Oh, Con control shift 1 to convert yeah, any one, format one, to number one, format yeah, yeah. One, yeah. 
right in the data presentation sheet in the day one we discussed well so control yeah. shift one the moment you go for this do you get the decimal post decimal two characters and the comma separate to everything is applied with yes so it's again a confirmation that our data whatever the numbers it's there in proper number format now we do not need that post decimal zero zero characters <laughs> it's unwanted to remove the same alt h9 Alt H9, or you can go for decrease decimal. The same thing, keyboard shortcut, Alt H9. All right. So, what are the necessary columns to be checked before creating a pivot? We got a basic understanding. So, up to this, all clear? Any doubt, any queries, anybody is facing any challenge in understanding the same? No, no. Great. Now the next activity, what we need to do people just watch my screen. I am bringing something to your notice. Just see if you look at our order date and year and month column. Can you see some problems there? Yes, yes, you can. So first of all, yes. the year is not matching with our date column and the month is also not yes. matching with the date column. So basically these two columns we need to rectify. So let's do it one by one. Go to our year column. What should be the formula to extract a year from a date? Day, date one. I mean, date day one we have already discussed. If you remember, there is a oh. formula called year, oh. right? Yeah. There is a formula yeah. called year. If you take that, and this demands me our date. The serial number is nothing but the date the and the moment. Date. Go for this, and the moment you double click on the fill handle, this will be ready. So this is our year formula to rectify our year column. Yeah. Similarly, go to the month column. Only go to the month column. So, which formula will be helping us to extract a month from a date? A date day date. one only equal to text. There is a formula called text we discussed already. The moment we we were calculating our e date and all there it also you can use this. So, going to text value is nothing but our date column then comma we need our format text so what is the meaning by format text ideally what is the format we are following dd mm yy or mm dd yy we are not going to deal with our either the date or the year we are going to deal with the month so within two double inverted quotes m four times mm -hmm. right so once you go for this bracket close formula is ready and the same we can apply for the rest so this is how people again what are the necessary columns to be checked and these columns will be definitely helping us to do the analysis as I told you already. If it is not there, you have to keep creating the same. So these formulas will be helpful on that. So what are the necessary columns to be checked and how to bring this in the same respective format and how to ensure that my values are exactly matching with my date column? We got some basic idea. So our data is now ready for next level. Any questions from anybody? Uh, go, go to the uh, month formula, uh, uh, powers. Yep. Oh, this is MM. Okay. Yes, fine. Yes, kindly confirm. Pavitra, Farin, Tulsi Ram. OK. So if at all in doubt or queries, feel free to ask me people. Don't hesitate. Yep, because all these things are necessary because first five minutes, whatever the time we are spending on the data, that is very, very essential. But where to focus, how to focus, how to rectify all these right techniques, if you know, and then you can make your things better. Yes, Vignes, any doubt, any queries? So, sir, I think <coughs> sorry, sir, I got it, sir. Mm -hmm. But after clicking that and now uh, apply to the entire. Uh, yes, double click on the sorry, entire. Uh, yeah, in the the button which you are actually click. help taking for dragging the same button you have to do double click. 
Double click and drag. We drag it or can we have like a no, 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 no. Just double click. Double click. Automatically, it will be populating for the whole column. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. Got it. Yeah. All right. So now, what's next? So before proceeding further with our pivot and all people, I will tell you one more thing you need to do. Last month, but the list. Select your data and convert your data into table. So I told you if you remember in our day two, how to convert your data into table multi DB filter. If you remember, we discussed something. What is the keyboard shortcut? Yeah. Convert your data into table. Control T, T for Tango, T for table, Control T. Yeah. So this is the reason why I told you keep practicing, keep practicing. So there is a lack of practicing. You can recall that I don't need to say. All right, so don't do the same mistake people. You have got good amount of time. If you do not practice the entire time, what you're investing money you are investing going to be waste. So please practice. Well. Sir, I have a doubt. Yes. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. Actually, uh, after that uh, MMYY provided in the month column and I, I clicked enter number 0019. Uh, text equals to text F5, comma MMYY. Uh -huh. That is the same. Uh -huh. Okay. So you have defined four M's in two double inverted comma, correct? Uh, yes, now I got it. Sir. Sorry, sir. No problem. Select your data and control A and convert the data into table by hitting control T, T for Tango, T for table. And the moment you click OK, you will be finding your data will be converted into a proper tabular format. So this is what the initial exercise you have to do before stepping into a pivot table. All right, so now keeping the cursor anywhere in this data set, go to your insert menu. OK, insert menu. You have the very first option called pivot table. OK, now here, please stay focused for one minute. If you are working with 2016 and above versions of Microsoft Excel, I would suggest just look at my screen. In this pivot table section, if you look at, there are two sections like the first half is a pivot table icon. Always go and click this icon. There is other half. You could see one navigation button is also there. Don't go for this option because if you go for this option, some features will be missing at this stage. So that's the reason why I always recommend go for this icon section. Go and click the icon. So go to our hmm. insert, go to our pivot table, click the icon. So when you click the icon, it will take you to a dialog box. You can notice the entire data set of one lakh records is forming part of a table and the table is also renamed as table one for everyone. And below to that yeah. it shows choose where you want the pivot table report to be placed. By default, it is there on as new worksheet. Let it be. It's always better to create a presentation in a new worksheet so that it will be neat and clean and presentable. Now, having said this, the moment you go and click OK, you will be finding one Excel sheet is going to be generated over here. And towards your left, you would be finding a box is there. This is the place where your pivot table is going to get designed. And within that, you can see there is a gray color box is also available, naming called pivot table one. So this is a message for us. Each and every pivot, whenever you design, it will be containing a unique name. And towards our right side, you will be finding a box where all the fields are listed. Whatever we had in the source data sheet, this is called pivot table field list box. Now towards the right, you could find small, small boxes kind of structures are there. This is called pivot table field area. Now we have only one job left. Whatever the fields we are looking for in our pivot table, we should go and drag and drop drag and drop over here. You can simply drag and drop, drag and drop, drag and drop and drag and drop. This is the only action we need to initiate. But the problem is if you look at in my screen, whatever the layout is there, it is not the same in your screen. Do you all agree? The layout is not matching with yours. Whatever my layout one, it is not matching with yeah. yours. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, it right. is, it is not, yeah. Now, if you compare both the layouts in my layout, I am getting enough space to work with. So definitely this looks better and giving enough space to work with. Even if I have got more 
and on the 10 fields also i could see all fields yeah. so this is the reason why yeah. i would suggest let's bring our layout to the equal page how see there is a settings button available go to the settings button uh, okay. And in that second option deals with field section and area section side by side. When you click yeah. that, you'll be getting exactly the similar layout just like me. So kindly confirm in the chat box, you got the similar layout people. Yeah. Got it. Yes, I got it. Okay. All right. So now what we can do, let's have a discussion. As we discussed, we need to only drag and drop the fields, right? But when I drag, I have got four different choices. So where to drop? For that reason, we need to follow a rule. Rule says that, can you see there is a sigma values one field area is there? It's a simple message for us. Whichever the field having the numbers or numerical data, you must populate in the value field area. Why? Is it mandatory? Yes. Because if you bring the numbers in the value field area, then only you can play around with your function or formula calculations like sum, count, average, product, minimum, maximum, all these things it's possible only if you bring it to the value field area. So let's go and discuss about the report by boss was asking. Last three years revenue data based on the products. So revenue data, the billing column is sales USD. Is it containing the data in numbers? Yes. So let's bring that in the value field area, drag and drop. Hold sales USD, drag and drop it in the value field area. Yeah. Now, three years last revenue data. So three years, we have a field called year. Take that into the columns. Drag and drop in the columns. So you can see three years in three different columns. It is appearing. Yeah. Next, base data based on the product. So there is a column called product description. You could see in our field list box that you can bring it to the row area and you will be finding a beautiful pivot table report is ready in front of your screen. Having the total of 31 lakhs, sorry, 31999253. So 3 crore, 19 lakhs, 99,253. Confirm the same total everybody has received. Yes. Find anybody is facing any trouble creating the pivot. Any doubt, any queries? All right. So I consider now we all are in equal page and we are good to go to the next level. So whenever you prepare a pivot table, people, no doubt this is giving a precise report having last three years data based on the products and this is the total revenue we made. All the list is there, no doubt. But the thing is, this data cannot be presentable for the next level or it cannot be presented. It cannot be dispatched to the next level. The reason is, as I told you in day one and day two as well, though you present your numbers, but little bit careful about your formatting pad because how you are presenting also plays a very important role. So first of all, the look and feel of pivot is not so great. How to change this? Let's see. Keep your cursor anywhere in pivot. You will be finding on your ribbon menu extreme right. There is a design button activated on your screen. Check it out, please. Do you all get design? Yeah. In this design tab, if you focus, there are many more styles are available. If you go for the more button, it opens up again with the three broad categories, light, medium and dark. The same what we used to get in our format as table option. And I told you, always go for light or medium. Do not go for the dark option. And what is the reason not to go yeah. for the dark option? Because of the size. File size will be heavy. The more the colorful yeah. cells, the maximum space it is going to occupy. So let's go for one medium category out of this. And the moment you click, you can see, is it giving the better look compared to the previous version of our pivot? Yes. Right. Yeah. 
Now, the moment we have done with this, there is another problem in our pivot people. If you look at, just stay focused on my screen. This Bolt, Gen X Nano, Hexa, Indica, Indigo, what are they? These are our products, right? Yeah. This is also having a field name called product description. But if you look at your pivot table field header, what it shows? Row label. So how a, or, I mean, a layman, if he's sitting in the audience, how he will make out that these are our products or these are our accessories or these are our inventory items, how he will know. So definitely this field header has to be changed exactly with our field name. Similarly, if you look at 2019, 2020 and 2021, what are they? These are our years, right? Yeah. Yeah, but it is showing column level again. So these are the common factors. I mean, you will be finding every time in the pivot. It always takes the generic name like this row label and column label. So we have to change these fields according to our field name. But how to do that? Our expert, they will suggest you, Prabhas, don't worry. Just change the field names manually. Don't ever do that, please. Right now, you're not having the impact if you change it manually, but tomorrow when you learn how to automate your reports by using Excel VBA macro, and suppose you have created a macro to automate your entire pivot report, then the macro is going to stop because you have changed the field name manually and it will not recognize the field names as it is and your macro will not work. So this is the only reason why I would suggest one thing. Keep your cursor anywhere in pivot and go to same design in the extreme right design tab. And from the left, third option deals with your report layout. Do you see yeah. a report layout in that? Show in tabular form. Show in tabular form. And immediately, can you see the respective column headers as yeah. it is being appearing over here? So this is what the minimum formattings you must do whenever you create a pivot table out of any sort of data. And we got our first pivot table ready from a data dump. So kindly rename the sheet the way I am doing it. Please rename the sheet in the similar fashion. What is that? Just see. Pivot, P-I-V-O-T bracket open one bracket close as it is same format you give it pivot one and one should be in two brackets so oh. first pivot table of our today's session is ready yes any question from anybody uh sir can you at least uh, uh page layout sir you design very beautiful yeah in the design Report layout showing tabular form. Report layout, sir. Report layout. Yes, yeah. report okay. layout. Thank you. Right. Yes. Anybody else is not getting the similar format of pivot? You can ask me. Or any challenge, any questions before stepping into the further topic? All right. <clears throat> so I consider everyone is clear with our first pivot table, but that is still not ready for dispatch. The reason is, if you remember, I told you in day one and day two as well. Nowadays, the audience is having a different level of expectation. When you present your data as it is, nobody likes it. So what audience is expecting when you present your data, the data should be arranged or presented in such a way it should tell a beautiful story to the people. So how to present our data in a storytelling format? Just see, in your grand total column, keep your cursor in any place, in any of the cell, and then go for right click upon that. You will be finding a option called over here, sort. And in the sort, when you navigate, do you have an option called sort largest to smallest? Go for it. And can you see a beautiful story turns up? What is that? From the entire table, whomever I'm presenting, even if a layman is also sitting, he can make out that from Indica, we got the maximum revenue. From Jest, we got the least revenue. Is it giving that message to you? It's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
So hope everyone is getting the same. Good. So, Ashreya, Farian, what's the status? I don't get any response from you. Are you with me? OK, great. So anything is not clear, feel free to ask Vignesh. Sir, uh, yes, I got it so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did not get you. I mean, have you got the same setup, whatever I'm showing on the screen? Yes, I got it, sir. OK, OK. Oh. Fine then. So now, once we got our first pivot table ready, people, let's do one thing. Just watch my screen. This pivot one sheet tab you can select and hold your control button and drag it to the right. You will be getting a clone of your pivot one. OK, and that name will come automatically as pivot table number two. So kindly confirm you got pivot table two ready. Hey. Yeah, ready. Yeah, so I'm not able to get it. Supposed to right click on it and drag. Okay. If you're not comfortable with this, do one thing. Go to pivot one, right click, move or copy. You will be getting. I get you. And if, when you go for move or copy, there's an option called create a copy. That checkbox to be on. And once you click OK, you will be finding same pivot table two will be ready. So that is a long route you have to take which you go for mouse mouse click. So simple. You can hold the control button and you can drag. So I gave you both the option, whichever it is comfortable, go for it. OK, I got it, sir. Right, very good. So okay. pivot two, I believe everybody is ready with our pivot table number two. Yeah, yeah. So give me a second, let me see. OK. Now let us go and discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Now see, stay focused for one minute on my screen and for focus on my screen. And focus. Yeah, somebody's mic is on. It's giving the uh, echo sound people. Just check it out. Okay, if you have any question, you can ask me. See, I presented this last three years data in three different columns and all the product details in the row level. So this is called technically a cross tab report. So what is the meaning by cross tab report? Something in vertical, something in horizontal. And all the pivot tables at any point of time, if you look at this will be always a giving a cross tab report only. OK, now when I presented this, my boss is quite happy the way I'm presenting and he is appreciating the work. He's telling Prabhas it's very easy for me to analyze. But so when he says, but we know one thing when boss is happy, what happens next? The expectation level goes high and the workload increases. So same thing happened with me also. So he is telling, stay focused, that Travis, you have given me last three years revenue data. That's fine. I want to do some macro level of analysis. I want to do some deep dive analysis. So what is the meaning by macro level of analysis or deep dive analysis? See, year wise records we have given. If I go in depth, month wise can be given also, right? So that's called your deep dive analysis. So first thing first, do we have a field called month? Yes, we do have. So no need to worry about. Just take month and put it across in the row area. And when you bring it, you can see pivot structure changes, right? So kindly confirm we got the same setup bringing the month in the row area. Now, great. So once you have got the same people, remember one thing. Whenever you are creating a pivot, first you need to understand that what kind of message this pivot is going to convey to the audience. So if I'm there at audience seat, what audience is going to understand? Let's have a discussion. My boss has demanded me last three years revenue data. Is it there? Yes. Next, what are the next immediate demand? Month wise data. Is it there? Yes. No problem. But 
as a company CEO, if I want to see my report or if I'm sitting at the audience side, I'm watching the report. The report is still emphasizing upon the product column. Though month is there, that becomes secondary. My product description is playing a primary role. So this is the place where people it has gone wrong. Though I have got my year and month wise records, but it is not giving the message properly. So what we need to do to bring the month as primary column, just go to our row area. You can notice the first field is their product description that you bring it below to the month, interchange the field, switch the field and see the report structure. It changes. Can you see now? Yes. Now just compare from the previous layout to this layout. You can understand the difference. So product was earlier primary column. Now product becomes secondary month become primary. And this is what my boss was expecting from me. So hope you got the understanding how is simply interchanging the field. The entire pivot story is changing. All right. Now, when you look at the same people over here, let's discuss something. Now, when I presented this, suppose I take an example. Our friend Raghavendra, he has created all these things and he is presenting to Anirudh. So Anirudh is focusing at the data points. Now, there are so many places he can notice that the blank cells are there. Now, immediately he asked the name, same question to our friend Raghavendra. So Raghavendra, why there are so many blank cells? He's asking the question. Well, so Raghavendra has to answer. So Raghavendra, what's your answer? What's your reply against of this question from Mr. Anirudh? Uh, yeah, uh, in January month for just 2019, there is no sales. And, simple, uh, simple. And, this yeah. is what whenever if you look at 2019 year for the month of January with regard to just and Indica, Genex Nano, Sumo Gold and Bolt. We have never raised a single invoice. This is pretty clear. But the person whom we are sending the data, unless and until he is thorough with our business activities, he will never be knowing. Now, suppose say Raghavendra has sent this file to five different people. So five different people will be having the same question in their mind. But when Raghavendra is going to explain for five different times, whose premium time is being wasted over here? Yes, Anirudh? Everyone. When, obviously, Raghavendra's time is being wasting, right? Now, whose mistake is in this? Is it the mistake of Anirudh since he's asking the question? Or is it the mistake of Raghavendra because he has given that opportunity to ask the question? So we know one thing. Boss is always right. He has got the rights to ask the question. You can't say your boss is wrong, right? And the data, whatever we are preparing, this is meant for the audience. So I cannot blame my audience at any point of time. So of course, it's my mistake or it's Raghavendra's mistake. We can consider that. So now the question is what we have understood. Whenever you prepare a pivot, your, if your pivot is containing the blanks like this, it is our duty to replace all these blanks with some kind of predefined text either zero, hyphen, nil, not available, not applicable, something like that, then only we can stop people asking unwanted questions. But how to do that? Technically, find and replace will not going to work over here, people, so don't expect that even. So I will tell you a very beautiful technique. Just say right click anywhere in the pivot, right click anywhere in the pivot. From the bottom, second option, what is that? Is it showing pivot table options? Go for it. And when you go for it, a dialog box will appear where you could see we have an option called for empty cell show. One box is there. In that box, you can type anything you want to replace with zero, hyphen, nil, anything. But I would suggest go for zero since we are dealing with numbers. So go for that. And click OK. Yeah, it comes through. And immediately you will be finding entire pivot is readily applied with zero text wherever the numbers were there and having the blank cells in place. So this is how you should do the right treatment before dispatching the file to the next level. So hope this is clear how to deal with our pivot blanks. Yes. Next. Now, please stay focused on the report people. OK, now suppose say 
Anirudh is watching the data and he's going for this product description one by one. He's looking at and the moment he's reaching to the Tiago. OK, now he is unable to make out this Tiago belongs to this which Tiago month or pertains to which, which month. month. OK, and then immediately he's asking to Raghavendra stating that Raghavendra, why don't you fill this month column entirely so that irrespective of any row item wherever I'm working with, I could make out this product is pertaining to this XYZ month. So basically, if you one line want to say this entire month column, if you look at people, wherever the blank cells are there, our friend Anirudh is expecting that it should be filled with the respective month names. And the same thing we did in our day two also, if you remember data fill the sheet name, with regular interval city names were missing, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, and all those things were missing. And we populated by selecting the data, control G, special, blanks, equal to, previous cell, control enter, all these sorts of exercise we did the other day. Remember? Yeah, yeah. So here the same thing needed, but you don't need to go for such a lengthy procedures to get it populated. There's a very beautiful option in Pboard. Just see. Keep your cursor anywhere in Pboard. Go to the same design tab. And in this design, if you look at, we have a beautiful option called report layout. We have already discussed about this. And within the same tab, you find an option called rep this repeat all item labels. Able to sing. And if you click, see the beauty, what happens? The entire things of month column, wherever the blank cells were there, is it getting populated with the month name? Yes. So this is what the beauty of pivot table. You don't need to struggle much. Everything is there. Only thing is we need to customize. So that's the story of our pivot table number two people. We have understood how to take more than one field and populate our pivot, how to interchange the fields to turn up a different story, how to deal with our blanks, and what is the use of this repeat all item labels to make our data presentation complete and make it a flat data over here. So pivot two, any questions, any doubt? Any queries? No. All right. So, Pradeep Pramod, status please. Okay. Fine. Let's do one thing. Go to our pivot to sheet tab. OK. Then holding the control button again, drag it to the right. So you'll be getting one more pivot table naming pivot table number three. Yes. All right. Now let's go and discuss what else we can do with regard to our pivot table. Now kindly stay focused for a minute. OK, now this is what suppose say our friend Raghavendra has presented to Anirudh. This is what we have been discussing, right now. Yeah, Anirudh is watching the data and he is telling that Raghavendra, this pattern is really good. The way you have designed the pivot last three years revenue data with regard to month, I'm able to analyze, but I am done with the product. I am done with the product wise analysis. But this layout is good. I like it. So now I am more interested to do the customer wise analysis. So first thing first, whichever column is unwanted product description. Let's go and deactivate that checkbox in the field list box. Deactivate the checkbox. So product description is disappeared. Now, what is the need? What is the ask based on the customer? So bring customer to the row area. Bring customer to the row area. And the moment you bring it, can you see the same layout? But now the data is still telling the story of customer. Kindly confirm.
Yeah, it is done. Great. Now, once we have done with these people, let us analyze the same report. Just stay focused for a minute. Sing. Our friend Anil started analyzing the data. So, who is the first customer? Al Hamid Automobiles. Everybody would be definitely yeah. getting the same, no doubt about it. Yeah. Now, Anirudh is watching that, okay, 2019 January, Alhamid Automobiles, no business. Fine. No business. Fine. Yeah. Going to yeah. Feb, some business is there. Some Problem. business is there. Problem. Going to March, there is no sign at all. Going to April, you could say again, no business. So like this, the moment Anirudh starts analyzing the data, he has to scroll down 12 times to get the entire year report. Do you all agree with this? Yeah. And this is what Anirudh doesn't like. Anybody will not like doing the same. So what Anirudh is telling now to our friend Raghavendra, saying that Raghavendra, this report is OK. Whatever you have prepared, the information is there, but it is not giving a comfort zone to work with. Why don't you do something with this report? Whenever I open the file, it should give me the entire information. I no need to navigate much. I no need to scroll a lot. So this is what Anirudh is now demanding from our friend Raghavendra. So how to present it then? Let's see. The moment I look at, keep the cursor anywhere in pivot. And if you look at the row area, month field is there, the first one. Take that month field in the column area. Just drag and drop in the column area and see the report. With immediate effect, could you please see on your data set, the entire customer name is appearing in one column? Yeah. But imagine how many columns we are landing up with. If I go to my grand total column and if I show, you can see on my status bar count how many columns it is showing. 41. So just imagine having 41 columns of data, how our friend Raghavendra is going to present it. This is the first question. Now suppose say Anirudh has never happened to see this report in this format. He asked Raghavendra, stating that Raghavendra, while coming to me, you please get me a printout. So how Raghavan is going to take a printout of 41 columns in one A4 sheet? Even though he tries hard, you go for like fit to page or page one, at least he can bring it, no doubt. But do you believe that the font size will be in a readable format? No, it's not a visual. Yeah. So definitely not. In this case, yeah. being a friend to Raghavendra, Pramod, do you give a suggestion to Raghavendra? Raghavendra, why don't you do one thing? Take the A4 sheet paper and go for a magnifying glass and submit it to Anirudh. He will help himself. Is this the right option? <laughs> no, of course not. not. So this is not the right way people precisely. We have understood that, but how to present it? Just see the beauty. One minute, watch my screen. Carefully observe. Next one minute, you can try. Don't worry. First observe what I'm doing. See, in my column B, if you look at, there is a 2019 one cell is available. No need to click anywhere. I need to select that cell. Right click upon that, I would see there is an option called expand and collapse. And within that, we have an option called collapse entire field. And when I go for this, see the beauty, the entire three years data. Now I could see in three columns having over here. A radio button created on that particular column. Now this report, suppose our friend Raghavendran has prepared this, no doubt. Now Anirudh is asking, suppose that Raghavendra, why don't you show me 2021 data? So 2021, when he clicks that radio button, only that column or that year data is going to be expanded. So unwanted data, we are not displaying. Unwanted questions are not going to come. And once the presentation is over, again, to restore your data, click on that radio button and this will be restored. So this is how you can present your data precisely, people, any point of time. And this is called out expand and collapse button. Check it out, give it a try and check it's working. Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Right. Any doubt, any questions from anybody? Sir, I'm having one question. Yeah, please ask. Uh, earlier to that, we uh, did it uh, all year wise. Just I want to. Uh, do that. OK, so you can share uh, your screen. Let's see. Hello. 
Yes. If if I want to convert into uh, uh, year month wise and year wise, that area of customers. Uh, this is year wise, month wise report. No, what do you yes, want to yes. do? we have to uh, shift that to uh, uh, this thing na customer wise and uh, product wise after that okay hello so month you take it to the column area month you take it to the column area okay so now and once yes. you bring it Keep your cursor in column B 2019 cell. Column B 2019 cell. Okay. Don't click there. Don't click there. Don't click there. Select that okay. cell only. Okay. No, no, no. Cell, cell. See B4. B4 is containing okay. 2019. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Okay. Right click on B4. Right click on B4. Expand and collapse. Collapse enter field. collapse enter field no no not collapsed collapse enter field just test mode where is the collapse no expand and collapse pramod ji dekhiye samne hi hai expand and collapse right click no you don't manually click on that that's what i'm saying i follow through instruction follow kariye right click on that don't click on that button don't click on that button ha ah, right right click karo ha ah, bas right click karo expand and collapse dikh raha hai ek expand and collapse oblique hoke group ke upar group ke upar wala group ke upar wala this this group ke ha okay uske andar collapse enter field collapse enter field okay. niche hai okay. niche hai okay ha usko click karna hai usko click karna hai ओके ओके आई गॉट रिपोर्ट ये बनेगा ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू पे आप घर में हो ऑफिस में नहीं नहीं और घर में तो यहाँ से स्क्रीन से नजर मत हटाइए बिकॉज ऑल द टॉपिक्स आर इंटरलिंक्ड एंड इट इज नेसेसरी ठीक है ओके ओके राइट चलिए सो आई बिलीव नाउ पीपल ऑल आर क्लियर विद दिस एक्सपैंड एंड कोलैप्स बटन एंड हाउ दिस इज हेल्पिंग अस टू मेक अ प्रिसाइज प्रेजेंटेशन एंड इफ इट इज नीडेड आल्सो द सेम वी कैन कैरी टू आवर पावर पॉइंट एंड वी कैन मेक अ बेटर प्रेजेंटेशन नो 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 इश्यूज नो वरीज अबाउट इट ऑलराइट नाउ ओके यस सो लेट अस गो ऑन डिस्कस समथिंग ऑन दिस पॉइंट ओके वी हैव प्रिपेयर्ड वी हैव क्रिएटेड दिस रिपोर्ट दिस एक्सपैंड एंड कोलैप्स बटन एनीबॉडी कैन यूज इट डू यू एग्री it's a simple right click it's available if you are presenting the same for the first time maybe our anil would be happy but second time when our friend raghavendran is going to present same do you think that anil is going to be happy he has seen that report last time right yeah so if you remember i told you something always try to make your presentation different from others so how to make it if you remember we discussed something in our day 2 the last topic about our data visualization all of you agree yes yeah yeah what are they they vis visualize the conditional format we are using the graphs and charts graphs actually spark line spark, spark line spark line and Then, uh, Like uh, yeah. we can see the uh, growth, like uh, it's going upwards or downwards. The sales is going upwards or downwards. What was that? What was yes. that? Uh, traffic lights and uh, the other thing. Is, no, no, no. Uh, traffic lights we have never used. We have yeah, used. Yeah, we are not. The, no, I'm telling in that. Uh, icon sets. Arrow, yeah, arrow. Icon sets. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, icon sets. Arrow. Right. So first we started with the data bars. Then we yeah. followed to our mm -hmm. spark lines. Then followed by our icon sets, the directional rules. and the yes. fourth one we discuss something about the add ins called people graph so this was our discussion on the day 2 last topic and i told you always give a add on by using this kind of visuals don't use immediately the charts and graphs people don't like this also certain times so now the time has come how to integrate our the visuals over here in our pivot table so that we can give a different meaning 
to our reports. So first one minute, please watch my screen carefully. What I'm doing, observe. Next one minute, you can try. Just see. I am keeping my cursor next to grand total and I am naming the cell as visual. Now to give a feel that this is the property of my pivot table, I will just paste the same format over here. Now, who is our first customer? Alhamid Automobiles. What is the last three years revenue? That alone I am going to select and I will go to our insert. The other day we discussed about the spark line and we discussed the column spark line, if you recall. But today I'm going to take you through the line spark line. And when I go to the line spark line people, I click. This will be asking me a dialog box. Where is the data? Data is already selected. Now, where is the location you want to define as a spark line? The visual column for cell. The moment I click OK, you could see more or less a line graph kind of options will be appearing. And along with that, one spark line tab also going to activate automatically in the extreme right of your ribbon menu. There is an option over here naming called markers. And when I go and choose this markers, the checkbox, this will be adding the points over here, the notes. Now, this will be happening only for one customer. The same I would like to apply for the rest of the customers. So simply I'll go and drag it for the rest of customers. Now see the beauty. When I'm going to present it to the people, people will love to see this and this. Nobody is going to read your data, numbers, boring, because it's a lakhs and crores or millions of billions. It's very difficult to understand. But here, if I look at all of the automobiles, what is happening? This guy is maintaining consistency over here compared to last year to this year. But here, if you look at the Aria motors, it's a good sign. They are giving the consistent growth over here. But if you look at the Bavaria motors compared to last year, the volume is completely down. It's a serious case. Why it is we need to check it out. Similarly, the Dalma motors also the same thing happening. Uh, last year there was a good business, but this year if you see the very severe downfall is there. So people will love to see this. So that's how we can give an add on to the data. What we have learned, the same thing, nothing much. So please give it a try and check it out. Is it working? And confirm in the chart box. Yeah. So where are we supposed Bravo, to search? Search all, all second, please. Insert spark line. So first you go and create the visual cell, then select our first customer that is Alhamid Automobiles three years data. Then go to insert and you have three different types of spark lines over here. Line, column, win or loss. Choose the line. OK, after that, it's asking me the range, cell range. Yes, data range is already selected. Then location, you have to select the visual column for cell. And then click OK. And then you have to go to the last tab, which is called Sparkline or Design or Tools or Option, depending upon the versions of your Microsoft Excel. You will be finding a markers tab is there. This option checkbox is not activated. You got to activate this. And once it is activated, the same you can drag it for the rest of the customers and it will be ready. I couldn't find this one, this uh, format which you have. OK, could you please share your screen? Let me have a look. Yeah, could you please share your screen? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that I've done. Right, that you can see format. markers. Markers is there. No, no, you have taken four combinations. No. It is not like this. Just go for one step undo. Okay. Uh, you should not select the grand total, only the last three years data, 2019, 2020, okay, 2021. Okay. Then go for insert. Okay. Insert. Spark line that line one. Yeah, now visual column for cell. Now click OK. And spark line yeah. tab markers is there. See markers is there towards your left towards. No, no, not marker color. Left markers one checkbox is there markers in the show category. One step, no, 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 just take left, 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 left. So we have got six options. High okay, point, low point. Yeah, uh, got, yeah, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, yeah now you okay. have to drag it down for rest of the customers. 
for dragging down again you have to use control double no, 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 no. simply simply drag simply drag no need to use control and all simply drag yeah thank you usually we double click yeah. the corner also sorry usually we double click at the corner also no that is for the formula application if you apply this one it will be applied yeah. for the grand total as well so we don't want the yeah. grand total to be applied with only with those customers data okay sir got it sir yeah all right friends so i believe everybody is clear how to give a add on to the data nothing new we have learned and we have got a simple example how to integrate the same what we have learned with some real time case all right so can i take that everybody is clear with our pivot table number 3 yes yeah yeah, yeah. but where right. where we'll use this uh, classic one actually the pivot actually we we'll use classic yeah. pivot table okay yeah, yeah, see yeah. Uh, that Data, is data something yeah right i'll tell you this is what the old school of thought people have mm. been using pivot table since the earlier days and they have more comfort zone to work with mm. but technically i don't prefer to do that because if you go for classic pivot table some features will be missing again okay so don't go for the classic pivot table layout but yes okay. certain cases why people recommend that because if you are sending the file to someone else and if he doesn't have the latest version like 2007 and above still he is working with 2003 or earlier versions of microsoft excel okay. then it will be a problem he can't have the entire features of pivot and your pivot is not going to display properly so to make him work with your pivot table you got to use the classic pivot table layout so even though he is in 2003 version of microsoft excel the pivot will be working fine for him that's why it is suggested that you should save your file either 97 to 2003 format or you go for classic pivot table layout all right hope it is clear why now let's do one thing people just select pivot 3 sheet tab and holding the control button drag it to the right so one more pivot turns up naming pivot table number 4 so let's discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot so pivot 4 is ready now let's do one thing this visual column work is over you can select and go for control minus select the whole column and go for control minus so control minus is to delete whatever you have selected either a row or a column it will be deleted now coming back to the pivot table the job is done so remove customer please deactivate customer remove month as well and if you remember the first pivot table what we have discussed with about product description so that one you bring it to the row area so we got our first pivot ready confirm please yes any doubt any queries no all right now let us go and discover some beautiful concept about people so please stay focused see this is what our raghavendra has presented last 3 years revenue data in three different columns first find out the ask what is the need exactly now anirudh is watching the data and he is telling that raghavendra this is a beautiful report you have prepared no doubt but you have given me only the revenue data over here i just want to know to generate this much of revenue how much incentives we have paid so basically anirudh wants to analyze revenue versus incentive column side by side or adjacent column and he want to make a report well so if that is the case first of all let's have a basic understanding in the corporate or industry whenever we are working with whom we pay the incentive technically to the salesman sales people or sales agents 
who helps in generating or boosting of our cells. Do you all agree? Yes. Yes. Now, whom we have paid, Anirudh is not interested in knowing that. How much we have paid that he wants to analyze that. So in that case, the first thing first over here, do you have a field called incentive? Kindly check. No. So our problem starts. We do not have a incentive column. Keep that things in hold. Now suppose say in Tata Motors, we have a uniform policy that whoever the salesman, though they're working in north, south or east or west or central zone, whatever the invoice they raise, they will be entitled for 2% incentive. This is a uniform policy or global policy of Tata Motors we have, suppose say. Now taking this over here, having said this, if I need to create a column naming called incentive, how will I create? That is what the question. So since we do not have the data, we do have an option all the time. We can go back to our source data sheet. Let's go for that. What is the last column we have, people? Channel, channel partners. partners. Right. Keep the cursor next to the channel partners and type. What should be the new field name? Incentive. Can you see the moment you hit enter? Automatically the same. Formatting is carried forward. This is what we have already witnessed in our day one and why this is happening because we have converted our table. data into table. So now you got to know why did I ask you to go for converting the data to table format? Yeah, right now coming back to the formula application for incentive equal to taking the reference of sales USD. This will take this at the rate symbol, square brackets and all. Don't be panic. The same thing we have already seen in our day one also. Just go for multiplying 2%. And the moment you hit enter, what is the beauty? It is not only applying to a cell, but also the entire column. Can you see that? You don't need to type all this equal to sales USD and all just equal to sales USD column cell multiply by 2%. Yes, and the whole column will be ready with your necessary answers. And this is again because of table format only we are getting the same. So all these things appears in our source data sheet or summary table data sheet. Now go back to your pivot table pivot table number four. <laughs> now below two channel partners definitely our incentive is missing but don't be panic just see the beauty right click anywhere in the pivot table do you see option called refresh and when you see that refresh and if you click that automatically what happens incentive is getting populated below two channel partners yes. now incentive what type of data it is holding numbers and i told you if a column containing numbers what is the right field area to place with Yes, people incentive values. values. Very good incentive bringing to the values. So bring it to the values and if you see immediately a new column will be coming up naming called total incentive along with that year wise how much incentives we have paid that also automatically calculates. So this is how people we have understood in our pivot table number four at any point of time. If you have missed out the data or if you do not have the data, we do have a choice. We can go back to the source data sheet. We can create a new column and the same. We can bring it to pivot table with a simple right click refresh and you can populate to the respective field area. And this option again, it works because we have converted our data into table. So now you must be knowing the essence of converting the table format, right? So kindly confirm if it is getting the same in our pivot table number four, whatever we discussed. Any doubt, any queries? Yes. Sir, uh, can you just repeat uh, what should you put through the value, sir? Should you convert like the last thing, the uh, row column value? What did you insert there? No, I'm not getting Vignesh. What you have missing out? I'm not able to understand. And the row columns, what did you place in the row and what did you place in the column and what did you place in the values? You should have asked me in the beginning. See, I explained at that time you missed out something that I explained about why we are putting to Sigma values. If at all the column is containing the numbers 
in this particular field list, if at all any column containing the numbers, we must bring it to the sigma value box. The reason is if you bring the numbers over here, you can calculate. Just see if I go for any field and click on that button value field settings, I'm getting something and there can you see some count average minimum maximum product all these things it will be coming up by default now if i go to my other field suppose i take an example i'm taking my salesperson over here for the timing okay if i go for this and field settings what is happening it doesn't give me the details i have to go to custom if i need something i can get it it doesn't give me the ready-made options okay so this is the reason why i asked you default option is if you bring it to okay. sigma value okay. column, any field okay. contain the numbers, you must populate over here. Now coming to rows okay. and columns, okay. it depends. Mm -hmm. Rows and columns, which field I am to bring it into rows, which field I have to bring it to the columns. Now take an example. If you look at in our Excel, this A, B, C, D and all, these are columns. Do you agree? Yes, sir. And this one, two, three, four, five, these are called rows that you know very well. Yes, sir. Now, if you compare both, which is more in Excel, the columns or the rows? Sorry? The rows are more. Rows. Rows are more. So, how many rows? If you look at 10 lakhs, 48, 576 lakhs. rows. Yes, sir. And how many columns? If you look at the column section, if you look at this is showing XFD. So this is nothing but our 16,384 columns. So if I go for my column formula, it will be giving me 16,384 columns. So which is more? Of course, the row. Right. Now, uh, whenever you no, compare no, any field, yes. Uh, sorry for interruption here. Uh, you just um, go to the last one, last row. How did you, um, how did you get this? Control down arrow key, you will be reaching to the last row item. Similarly, control no, right arrow key, you will be going to the last column. Control right arrow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So here, now Vignesh, to answer your question, how will I decide which field to be retained in rows or columns? Now take an example. I have got two fields, products and month. In these two fields, which field may contain the more or maximum variables? products definitely month is always standard do you agree 12 yeah 12. so now out of these two products is more so in excel which is more uh, rows so products we should retain in the row and month should be retained in the column but there is no hard and fast rule you can interchange the field according to the need but this is what the basic fundamental whichever is is having the maximum variable you always should retain in the row area since in our excel we have got more rows compared to columns hope you got a basic understanding it's all right good you. welcome now the moment you go for this people we have got our pivot for ready no doubt about it I will just bring it again over here. Sales personal limit. Yeah. Now let's do one thing. Keep your cursor in pivot four, sheet tab, and holding the control button, drag it to the right. So you'll be having one more pivot naming pivot table number five. So kindly confirm you got your pivot five ready. Promot koi doubt hai? Good. Today Pradeep is not there or something. Promot is there. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. Pradeep is missing. Fine. Hello. Theek hai. Tulli Ram. Hope it is clear. Getting it. Do hang on the topics. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Good. Fine then. So let's go for our pivot five. Let's discuss what we can do. So incentive work is over. Anil is quite happy in the way our friend Raghavendran has presented. So incentive work is over. Kindly remove that, the checkbox. So don't be panic. 
If I deactivate the checkbox, the field will be missing. No, it will be retained as your existing field of your pivot table. Any point of time you want to bring it back, you can bring it. Not a problem. Now, once we have done with this, now Anil is quite happy. And we know one thing when boss is happy, what happens? Yes, people? Expectation is more. Same. So Anirudh's expectation has increased. What he's saying to Raghavendra, he's saying, Anirudh saying that, Raghavendra, thank you so much. You have given me that incentive data. I could analyze and express it properly, but I'm done with that. Now I am more interested in knowing while making this much of billing or while generating those invoices, how much discounts we have given to our customers. I want to know that. So now Anirudh is more interested in knowing Billing amount versus discount amount or billing column versus discount column side by side or adjacent column he wants to analyze. Well, so first thing first, as we have discussed the procedure, where to check in our field list. Do we have a field called discount? Kindly check. No. No. So again, problem starts. Fine, keep that things on hold. Suppose say in our Tata Motors, like our incentive for discounts also, we have a global policy. What is that? Whoever our customer, though they buy a small quantity or they give a bulk order to us, everybody is entitled for 5% discount, suppose. Now having said this, if I need to create a column called discount in our pivot table, how will I create? That is the question. Now, if this is the case, like incentive, can we go back to our source data, create a column called discount and bring it to pivot table? Do you all agree? Yeah. No problem. So let's go for a discussion. Don't create that. Let's go for a discussion. So stay focused on my screen. No need to do anything. The moment we go to our summary table, create a new column, defining our formula, bringing the same to pivot, right click, refresh, bringing the field in the field list box, populating in the value field area. How much time roughly we have spent over here? Two to five minutes. Do you all agree? Yes, sir. Yes. So one end two to five minutes of quality time, what we spent, it's a waste of time. Trust me, it's a waste of time. And besides that, what is happening when you go back to your source data, create a new column and applying your formula for one lakh row items like this, automatically your file size is also increasing. Do you mind that? Yeah, yeah. So having said this, what we did for incentive, though our experts suggest us to do your job like this, but Microsoft Excel never recommends for that and neither I do advise for it. So now the question is, if I need to create a discount column without creating the data in the source data sheet, how to create? All right, so do one thing. Start working with me. Keep your cursor anywhere in pivot table. And on your ribbon, you will be finding one tab naming called pivot table analyze or analyze maybe depending upon the versions would be there. Is it there? Yeah, pivot table analyze yeah, 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 yeah. analyze something right just yeah, yeah. navigate through that you see a option called calculations a group called calculations within that do you see an option called fields items and sets yeah In, I got it. if you go for that the very first option is there called calculated field yeah click on that and it will take you to a dialog box called insert calculated field. Now, yes. the first criteria is the name. What would be the name of the newly added field? Should be discount. So define there yes. discount. Okay. Then next criteria is your formula. Whatever is written in the formula blocks, please delete it. Can I take the view? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me what happened. Uh, sir, I'm not getting that ribbon, sir. That uh, pivot, this thing. I uh, uh -huh. uh, track on the pivot table on Sorry. grand total, and that uh -huh. uh, on the top of ribbon, it is not showing, sir. No, no. If you keep the cursor in pivot, yeah. Look, pivot table analyze, not showing. Not showing, sir. So what is showing? Last, pure last, me what is showing? Tell me what you want to do, or what is the design showing? 
हाँ तो डिजाइन से पहले क्या दिख रहा है एनालाइज हाँ तो वही तो मैं बता रहा हूँ ना एनालाइज नहीं तो पीवर टेबल एनालाइज दिखेगा ओके एंड तो उसके अंदर उसके अंदर क्लिक करो दिख रहा है एक फील्ड्स आइटम्स एंड सेट्स ऐसा दिख रहा है फील्ड्स आइटम्स एंड सेट्स यस हाँ उसके अंदर देखो कैलकुलेटेड फील्ड यस हाँ उसको क्लिक करो ओके फिर मिलेगा उसमें इंसर्ट कैलकुलेट फील्ड जो पहला नाम होगा यू कैन कीप इट एज डिस्काउंट ना फॉर्मूला जो भी है उसको मिटा दो मेक इट क्लीन कंप्लीटली पीपल एंड ओवर हियर वी आर गोइंग टू डिफाइन आवर ओन फॉर्मूला सो स्टे फोकस प्लीज इफ यू रिकॉल व्हाट इज दैट फॉर्मूला इन डिस्काउंट कॉलम वी शुड हैव अप्लाइड लाइक फाइव परसेंट ऑन द बिलिंग कॉलम डू यू ऑल अग्री यस सो इफ यू लुक एट द फील्ड लिस्ट बॉक्स पीपल डू यू सी ए फील्ड कॉल सेल सी एस डी पॉपुलेटेड ओवर हियर Yes. Double click on sales USD. That will be immediately embedded in our formula box. Don't yes. type it manually. Don't edit it manually. Just double click, and then okay. multiply. How many percent is as we discussed? Five percent. That's 5%. it. Yeah, that's it. This is the only thing you have to do. And the moment you click OK, see the beauty. A new column is going to be added in your pivot table over here. Not only as a total discount, but along with the year-wise discounts, how much we have given to our customers. Everything you can calculate. So see, thing has become so easy. And if you go to your source data sheet also, there is no such kind of column called discount. And if you look at your pivot table, it is automatically taking your data into the value area. Excel is intelligent enough to understand discount is containing the numbers and it is populating in the value field area. Can you imagine how the things yeah. have become so easy? Isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. So this is how people we have understood. You can create. Many more real-time, I mean, virtual fields or calculated fields. There is no restrictions, but procedure remains the same. And the beauty is, it is not going to create your data in the source data sheet. Any doubt? Any queries in pivot table number five? So oh, summary table, uh, sir. Uh, it is the summary table. You won't have any changes. The source data won't change. Only in the pivot table will be an automation. No, no, Vignesh, please go slow. I'm, I'm unable to catch your uh, things because it's okay. partially breaking the voice. So if you can go slow, I can. No problem. And summary table, your source table, there won't be any changes. But yes. And the pivot, what we changed is we added another field, another uh, field called discount, and we are given a formula category, and that will automatically pre-populate in this particular right. page. In this particular. Right. Page. Right, okay. that's the beauty. So it is not going to create your data in the source data sheet. So if people would be expecting, there is no point of doing that. If you again creating the data in the source data sheet, file size is getting heavy, right? That's what we discuss. The problems, the drawbacks for incentive. The moment we create this column called incentive, the drawbacks we discussed. One is time taking, other one is making the file size heavy. So that's the beauty of your calculated field. We got the understanding. All right. Yes. So I believe it's clear. Pivot five, whatever we discuss, people. Any doubt? Any queries from anybody? Raghun, Pravas. Yeah. Uh, what actually I'm asking that uh, if I put populate it in this uh, pivot table, so there will not be chances to uh, increase the file size. No. Nope. Only nope. where you have the data that that is the reason actually the file will be increased, right? Yes. Source data file will be increase. Your pivot table hardly to be increasing by KBs. See, I'll tell you to get rid of the entire, uh, I mean, a lot of confusions in your mind. I'll tell you one thing about the concept of pivot table. Being a user, you must know. See, yeah. the moment you create a pivot table, suppose I take an example, I have taken this data. Okay. No need to do anything. Just watch my screen. Okay. Okay. I have got my pivot from this. I am preparing a pivot table. I'll go insert pivot table yeah. and I will go for my customer in the rows and sales USD in the values. Suppose that this is what the pivot table I have prepared. Now, yeah. ideally, what we do, we send this file to our boss or superior, whoever XYZ. Yeah, right now what I'm trying to say is the moment you create a pivot table, OK? It's not necessary mm -hmm. to send your source data. 
you can delete this sheet and you can send only the pivot table. Okay. So the beauty is once pivot table is ready, there is no need of your source data because pivot itself in the back end, it creates a temporary memory. And tomorrow when you bring something, see all the fields are there, but we do not have a source data sheet. Can you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if I go for my year over here, I'm getting the value where these values has come because it is taking the value yeah. from the temporary data. It is not depending upon your source data sheet. So that's what the beauty of pivot concept. So pivot always creates a cache memory that we call it as over here cache memory. OK. OK, the um, temporary so memory. If I don't have any. Yeah, if I don't have any like source data, also it will be working, right? Yes. Now. I will tell you now suppose say this is what you have done and you have presented the same to your boss. Now your boss is asking you that Anirudh, where is the source data? I want to go through that. I want to go for some more analysis. No yeah, problem. Yeah. You can ask him yeah. go to the grand total and double click and immediately the same entire one lakh records oh, of yeah. last three years will be ready. Wow, great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So this is what the data again. It is pulling out from that cache memory, that temporary memory. What pivot is creating in the back end? So that is what okay. the pivot concept. Okay. It always creates a temporary memory and the data is being compressed. It stores the data in a zip mm -hmm. mode. Like ideally what you use the WinRare, WinZip, mm -hmm. zip and all. Yeah, yeah, zip mode, yeah. Yeah, Correct. same concept. It stores the data. That's why it is not occupying much of your space. Okay, so anything we can delete, then we can also get yes. the data. Yes, so as long as pivot data. is there. Now you see. It. Yeah, now yeah. you'll see if I try to store this file, I'm just taking one minute of your time to make your concept clear. See, no I'm storing I'm I'm storing this file uh, book two. Okay. okay, now when I store mm -hmm. this, how much space it is taking? Hardly of 31 KBs. Can you see? Oh, great. Yeah. All the three years mm -hmm. data is there. Pivot is there only 31 KBs. Now, yeah. if you go back to our file, the data analysis, how much? Only 48 KB. Can you see that? Yeah. So many pivot tables yeah. we have created along with the source data. Five pivot table is there, but only 48 KB. So that's what the beauty. Mm, okay, understand. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's a very new thing, actually. I got to know today. Yeah. No, this concept almost, also nobody. Not... I'll tell you, uh -huh. you even though you search in the internet, anybody's YouTube, nobody will be yeah. explaining you about the pivot concept, how the data is being stored. Everybody will tell you yeah. go there, drag here, drop there. They yeah, will tell yeah, you yeah, all yeah. these things. Yes. yes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, thank not you. a problem. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah. No problem. Welcome. Yeah. All right, people. So Vignesh, hope it is clear. The question what you asked. And no, are those yes, are clear. Yes, really okay. thank you. Thank Great. No problem. Now pivot five. We are done with that people. Now do one thing. Select your pivot five sheet tab and holding the control button, drag it to the right. So pivot six will be coming up. Let's discuss what we can do with our pivot table number six. So our discount work is over. Kindly deactivate the discount box. So don't be worried. Again, this field is going to be retained in your pivot only. Though it is a virtual field or though it is a calculated field, but still it will be retained as a property of pivot. Again, when you want to bring it back, you can bring it. Not issue. Now. Let us discuss something over on this point. Say. Stay focused, please. Now we are going to discuss one more beautiful concept of our pivot. Suppose say our friend Raghavindran has presented the same to Anirudh. Anirudh is quite happy. The layout, whatever Raghavindran has opted, like last three years revenue data in three columns and all the products in the row area, Anirudh is happy with watching that. So he is telling to Raghavindran that Raghavindran, this pattern is very good. I like it, but you have given me only one pivot table. So what I'm expecting is similar pattern, similar layout should be there, but I am expecting multiple pivot tables based on the salesman. So now Raghavindran, what he has to do, he has to prepare multiple tables, multiple pivot table, but the layout should remain the same and that table should be based on the salesman. So how we are going to deal with the same? So we'll start working with our friend Raghavandan. So Raghavandan, what is your opinion? How you are going to deal with the same?
Raghavendra there. Uh, it's not audible, Raghavendra, if you're trying to speak something. Okay, repeat the question, sir. He's not there. Hello. Raghavendra? Okay. Yes, Vignesh, you are saying something? I think, I think he's on mute, sir. Can you repeat the question so that I'm going to ask him? Okay, the question is, this is what the data we have. Okay. And we have only prepared one pivot table, but boss is expecting multiple pivot tables to be prepared, and that should be reflecting the data based on the salesman. So salesman wise pivot table should be there, but the layouts or patterns should remain the same. Simply uh, copy this and paste it in the salesman. But how you will connect with the salesperson or sales data? So we need to drag the salesperson to the column or row. OK, OK, good one. Right. And Raghavan hey, was struggling something. So he has description. Yes, we can do the product description. You can remove the product description and uh, so then that report is... layout will be missing, right? If I remove the product description, then it is incomplete. This is what Anil is expecting. All these details should be there, but the yeah. data should be reflecting the salesman data. OK, let's 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 analyze the same. Watch on my screen. I am doing on behalf of all. No need to do anything. So uh, as we have, yeah, sorry, as we develop the... six. Hello, sorry. Yes, Raghavidam. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, my system got uh, suddenly it got uh, some black screen came, so I uh, missed that point. What you are referring? Pivot six we created. So in that, what we did actually? Sorry, sorry. we did not do anything. We were discussing. This is what we were discussing. That this is okay, what the sorry. pivot table you have presented to Anirudh, and Anirudh is quite happy with the layout and the pattern, but he is expecting that you should present your pivot table based on the salesman. Now suppose say there are two hundred salesmen. The pivot table should create 200 pivot tables in this format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can have the particular salesperson, even the if suppose a lot of salesperson, you can have it in the row, otherwise, you can have it in the column. So we'll see that. Salesperson. We'll see that. Don't worry. Well, so Raghavandan, hope it is clear. The ask, whatever it is from Anirudh. Yeah. Fine. Let's go for it. So no need to do one thing. I am doing on behalf of all. Please watch my screen carefully and understand. OK, now in this case, the first thing what we need to focus people as we develop the practice, we need to check. Do we have a field called salesman or sales agent or salesperson? Yeah, no, only sales ID is there. Yeah, salesperson is there. Salesperson is there. So we don't need to be worried about. Yeah, we have yeah. the data. Right now, hold on just one minute. Watch my screen. See, I took salesperson to the first to the row area. Pattern is missing. Pattern is changing and Anirudh is not happy with that. Well, I took it to the column area. Pattern is remaining the same. Salesperson field is there, but name of the salesman is missing. Again, there's no point of doing that. Now I have taken this to the filter area. OK, there is also called filter area. I took that. Now what is happening? My pattern remains the same. I'm a bit happy with that and my pivot also carrying a field called salesperson. Can you see now? So in this case, what happens now? Our friend Raghavendran becomes so happy because I got that answer to Anirudh to speak about what he said now to Anirudh. He asked Anirudh, Anirudh, you are expecting multiple reports, right? Do one thing. Go to that filter button, click on one particular salesman name and click OK. Now this data will be pertinent to salesman one. Only thing is you have to insert a new worksheet and you have to copy this pivot table and paste it over there. And this is the only action you have to repeat for 200 times. This is the kind of suggestion our friend Raghavendran has given to Anirudh. So Anirudh, what will be your reaction? No, it's not possible. Well, so yeah. Well, so hope you have understood what is that task yeah. now yeah yeah sure. now just imagine take a situation this is what i have explained to my boss okay what is the reaction i will explain that he has listened my whole story and he looked at my data he looked at me and he gave a plastic smile you know plastic smile the smile which is not natural you will be finding quite yeah, common in the corporate world right yeah so yeah, what yeah. my boss is saying prabhas 
I am really impressed with your smartness. The way you have diverted the entire responsibility towards me, I like that. Now let's do one thing. If I'm supposed to do your work while coming to the office tomorrow morning, please bring your resignation letter with you. I would be happy to sign on that. But don't take office stationery. Get it printed from your home only. This is how my boss yeah. reacts. So what you have understood from the whole story that we cannot divert our responsibilities towards our superiors. Do you agree? Yep. Right. Now, what Anirudh is expecting from Raghavendran? Have a look. No need to do anything again. OK, so basically we are working with a global report and we have got salesman. How many? 200. So what is the first job? Raghavendran has to do anybody. The first job is he has to go and create some worksheets for how many people? Obviously, 200, 200 people, 200, 200, 200 worksheets. Yeah. Job number two, he has to copy this pivot table and paste it for how many times? 200 times. 200, job yeah. number three, he has to select filter with the salesman name. How many times? 200 times. That's also not enough. 600 tasks is not enough for him, for Anirudh. He's expecting that our friend Raghavendran should go and rename all the worksheets with the salesman name and that too 200 times. So total, how much task? 800 task. Think about it. So Raghavendran, yeah. how much time it will be taking for you? It will take more than hour. More than hour, obviously, but you have to give the timeline, time limit. Yeah. Keep three hours. Three hours. Yeah. If you do it in three hours, I'll immediately give you a cash prize of 5,000 rupees. Trust me. Eight hundred tasks. Not less than eight hours. Trust me. Not less than eight hours. Yeah, more than a day. Yeah. Right now, when Raghavendran yeah. is saying, OK, uh, Anirudh, this will take one day. Now, Anirudh, do you have that much of patience to alert eight hours time to do this job? No, definitely not. Be, uh, so yeah, in I this case, like, he will be definitely expecting one or two hour max to max. You take it and complete it and send it across to uh, me over email. Manage. Now, yeah. when his best team man is saying eight hours somewhere, our friend Anirudh is not convinced, but he has no other options giving that or allotting yeah. eight hours of time. And when he's not convinced, definitely the productivity is again having a question mark in his mind about our friend Raghavendran and KRA report is negative. Yeah. And if KRA report is negative, our appraisal form also shows something negative reports. So this is how people in yeah. the corporate world the entire reaction happens in our tenure. Trust me. Now imagine that entire eight hours or 16 hours of job. If I would make it happen for you just in 10 seconds, in 10 seconds, how much of quality time we can save a lot. So this is what now our objective. So whenever there is a need how to export our pivot table report into multiple reports on a click of button, that is what our objective. So let's start working. So first thing first. Boss is expecting salesman wise data. So do one thing. Bring salespersons to the report filter or filter area. First do that. Bring salespersons to the filter area. Yeah. Now once you bring it, all of you can notice that above to the pivot table, a filter also activated naming called salesperson. Yeah. Don't click on that filter button. Just select the cell. That B1, select the cell. OK. And once you select that B1 cell, you can see we have a option called pivot table analyze in the report. Yeah, this is what we have already discussed. Analyze or pivot table analyze. Go to that yes. and the very first option deals with your pivot table. And in that pivot table name is also there. Yeah, and this pivot table name don't click below to that. You can see options also there. Don't click that option also. Next to option, there is a small navigation button is there. Click on that. And when you click that button, you can notice there are three options turns up. Options, show report filter pages, generate get pivot data. Go for the second option, show report filter pages. 
And when you go to that, you can see a dialog box appears over here. And is it showing the salesperson field listed in that box? Yes, yes. Yes. And if you recall, boss is also expecting salesperson voice data. Yes. Yeah. Now just click the OK button and see the beauty on your blink of your eyes. Your pivot table will start exporting the data into multiple reports. Yeah. Not only the pivot yeah. patterns remains the same, pivot filter also selected with the salesman name. And if you see your sheet tabs also generated with the salesman name. So this is called people yeah. life savior option of our people table. Trust me, I have seen people literally sitting and doing the copy paste work at the year end. So if you know the tools properly. Any point of time, if you want your product wise report, customer wise report, cost center wise report, business unit wise report, anything you want, you can generate that. And that's what the beauty of this pivot table show report filter pages. So kindly confirm this is happening for everyone. Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. right. uh, okay. so basically, uh, if you want a filtered copy of the salesperson or this product description, whether you want it specifically for one particular thing, you have to filter out. We'll have to use the filter options and uh, we'll have to use that to report filter. Okay. Right. In one line, if you want to say whichever the filter based multiple reports you are expecting that field you have to bring into the filter area. Suppose you want customer as a report, you can bring customer. If you want to have more than one also, you can bring that. But which is your active field? Based on that only, it is going to create the multiple reports. So if your active field is salesperson, you have selected salesperson, it is going to create the multiple reports based on the salesman. If you want to go for customer, you have to bring it to the customer field selection, then you have to go for this operation. Okay, okay. Right. All right, so now we have done over here with our pivot table number six. Hope it is clear. Any doubt, any queries from anybody? No. Uh, yeah. Prabhas, uh, if yeah. I bring back to the same one, then uh, what I'll do? Like, you don't need to I bring don't back. Need... You're already there. You have already got your data. You don't need to bring back. It is the additional fields it has created. No, but no, you have. I, yeah. If I. No, no. If I uh, want to delete that all data, the one right. by one, I can't do that, right? No, 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 no. You don't need to go for one by one. See, just watch my screen. I have got SM1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I'll first select SM1. Now I could notice mm -hmm. all my salesman names are there up to SM9. I want to delete. Correct. So I will take my mouse pointer to SM9. I will not click. I will just take my mouse pointer. But while selecting SM9, I will hold my shift button and I select. Can you see all these sheet tabs are white color? Oh, okay. yeah. yes. It means yes, all yes. these sheets are in selection. I need to go for mm -hmm. Alt E L or you can go for right click and delete the same thing. Whatever you do, it will be bringing the box. Now, whichever the sheets are in selection, those sheets alone will be going to be deleted. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so this is yeah, yeah. Uh, try the same thing. Uh, I've clicked on the. I clicked on one cell. Uh, I suppose to click shift and right key, sir. No, no, no. You have selected one sheet tab. Now take your mouse pointer to the last sheet, which is in contiguous. And while selecting the last sheet tab, you have to hold your shift button and click. So automatically starting from the first sheet till the last sheet will be in selection and it will be turning up as a white color or something different color. OK, and then you go for right click and delete. OK, yes, sir. Is it up happening? Yes, sir. OK, great. All right, so now coming back to our pivot table number six people, let's do one thing. Just select that pivot six sheet tab, holding the control button, bring it to the right. So we got one more pivot table naming called pivot table number seven. Now we have done with our salesperson data. Kindly deactivate that salesperson field from our pivot table field list box. OK, right. Now we are going to discuss some more beautiful information, but before that we'll go for a short break 
and come back. Then we'll discuss and continue. OK, so in my system it is of 356 and I consider up to 410 will be having a break. So short break of 15 minutes. Thanks. 410 PM we will resume our session. So have a brisk and come back soon and please be there by 410 PM. We'll discuss the rest. OK, 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 thank you. Yeah.
All right, so let's discuss on our pivot table number seven. What else we can do with regard to pivot table? So here. Now can you take a look at this? This pivot table, whatever we have presented, OK, for the last three years, if you see it is billions, millions of lakhs and crores, maybe my immediate boss would be happy watching the same. But when I'm presenting my data to the audience, I mean so, uh, to my management people or to my stakeholders or the audience, they don't have time to go through all these things and it's very difficult to interpret also, isn't it? And for this, we have already seen our day one. The data presentation sheet to make it more informative, we can present our data in percentage. That will be more ideal. Do you all agree? Yes, yes, yes. So now the question is how to present this year wise, whatever the data is. Suppose say it is of 618,378 for Indica. How much it is contributing towards my revenue out of my exactly this total revenue we have to present it in the percentage so every year wise we need to have a separate column in terms of percentage so three years data three again three years data in terms of percentage we have to provide that is what our objective but how to do that technically all this information people present it by using the manual columns or some helper columns we are not going to do that we are going to do the same in pivot itself but how see the beauty First of all, to present such kind of information, we need to deactivate this grand total column. Because grand total column is not playing any role over there. But which grand total? There are two grand totals. So this is called our row wise grand total. Yes, it's in a column, but this is nothing but row wise total. So this row wise total is over here. Again, this row wise total is over here. This row wise total over here. So this is why it is called as row wise grand total. Now one more is there. This is called column wise grand total, though it is in row, but this is showing this column total, this column total, this column total. That's why this is called column wise grand total and this is called row wise grand total. So we need to deactivate row wise grand total, but how? We can't hide. That is not the again idle process. I'll tell you a very beautiful option. Select your any of the cell of pivot. Go to the design button, design tab. Do you see an option called grand total? It turns out from the left second option grand total. And in this grand total, we have an option on for columns only. On for columns only. So when you click that immediately, that row wise grand total will be missing. It will disappear and it will retain only the grand total of the column. So kindly confirm all of you have got the same pattern. Yes. Right now what you need to do is just one minute focus on my screen. Look at the screen closely. Understand in one minute I'll be giving time to try with see in our value area already sells UST is there, correct? I will take this sales UST one more time to the value field area. And once I bring it, you can notice this is again populating over here. A new column naming sum of sales USD Two. I will keep my cursor in that cell. I will right click upon that. There is an option over here. Show values as and when I go and navigate, you will be finding there's an option called percentage of column total. You don't need to go for grand total percentage of column total. So when I go for percentage of column total with immediate effect, you will be finding a new column is turning up with percentage symbol and that one we should name it as over here revenue percentage and the earlier column we can name it as revenue only and when I go and present it precisely people will love to see what I'm presenting right so this is my revenue data and revenue in percentage for 2019 again 2020 revenue data in terms of percentage so like that within pivot itself we could create and the total is it showing 100% for all these three years yes so this is how you can create a new column over here showing the data in terms of percentage. So can you do that? Bring sales USD first to the value area. The new column header, whatever it turns up, sum of sales USD to right click show values as percentage of column total. And then name the field as revenue percentage and the earlier column you can name it as revenue.
OK, so I got three confirmation. How about others? Anybody is facing trouble and a challenge? Do let me know. I actually change it, sir. Uh, after that, I'm mm -hmm. going to change the revenue and all the percentage. And uh, the year is also a change. No, no. What is I've that? Got, you have changed? I've got the sales USD to uh -huh. sales USD, some of sales USD. And right. it will keep repeating for three years. Right. Yes. And I want to change the name to revenue. Yeah, you have to type just just one thing. You type sum of sales USD two. You name it as revenue percentage. Just simply type. No need to backspace, delete anything. Just select that cell and type revenue I percentage. Can't. And similarly, sum of sales USD. You can type as revenue. Two thousand nineteen. I'm actually getting not going so long. You can share your screen. Let me have a look. Oh, you're on this year. No, 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 no. Unable to share. No, see the screen. I mean, have you shared your entire screen or entire desktop? Because it's showing blank. Huh? Now I can see that. Oh, you're on. Uh, uh, maybe two thousand nineteen. Go for undo. Just first undo. Control uh, Z. Uh, control Z again. 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 One more time. Right. Now start. Okay, Go to grand this. total. Yeah. Grand total first deactivate. On four columns only. Yeah. Now keeping the cursor and pivot. Go to sales USD. Bring it over there in the value field area. Mm -hmm. Right. Summarize values by. Yeah, summarize values by. No, down, down. So values as. Go to show values as. Yeah. Percentage of column total, not grand total, column total. Yeah. No problem. No, no. Keep the cursor in the column header. Keep the cursor in the column header. Column header. Yeah. And then do the operation. Right click, show values as percentage of column total. Yeah. Then go to the design button again. Go to the design button again. And go for your report layout. Repeat all item labels. Okay. okay, now change the column header name to revenue percentage. And the all your column revenue only. So it will be applied for the rest of the years also. Okay. Thank you so much. Welcome, no problem. All right, so here the moment we have done with this. This is one thing we know now how to do the same in pivot itself. No need to go for a, some helper column or manual column. Now one more thing, suppose say stay focused. This is what our friend Raghavendran has presented and Anirudh is watching and he is telling that Raghavendran this Indica 6,18,372 USD definitely it may not be of one invoice value, correct? It may be the combination of many more invoices. Do you all agree? Yes, yes, yes. So what Anil is saying now to Raghavendra, 
that how many invoices comprising this value or this total is the combination of or summation of how many values of how many invoices i want to know the number of invoices as well so basically under this expecting a invoice count depending upon the product and year we need to have one more column so how to get it just see i will take again this sales ust over here in the values again some of sales ust yes, to come right click on that column header summarize values by we have by default option is on sum so i want to change it to count and when i change it to count you can see it will be showing the number of invoices so i can make it as invoice count okay and when i go for it this is ready immediately instantly so these are not there available we are only customizing the things according to the need so this is how you can take one particular field into value field area and you can present it in different different ways so give yes. it a try and check okay, you try and check Yeah, it is done. So these are the fields which is necessary people, but now we come to know instead of creating the helper column, how to do the same. Now, being a presenter, if you watch your screen, do you think this is this the ideal way of presenting our data? Do you think this is the ideal order we can present our data? No. So ideally, if you look at these three columns of 2019, which one is supposed to yeah. be the first column as invoice count? This invoice account, yeah. Following by revenue, following revenue by percent. revenue percentage. This is the order. Yeah. Do you all agree? Yeah. Yeah. So to bring the same, no need to be panic. Just bring this invoice count, drag it and put it in the up. That's it. And your order is ready. See how quick is it? No need to struggle over that. So that's what the beauty of our pivot table people, how to make it more informative, precisely doing this kind of statistical calculation. And that's the story of our pivot table number seven. Any doubt, any queries in pivot table number seven people, anybody? No. All right, so kindly save all your workbooks. And then select your P1 7 sheet tab, holding the control button, drag it to the right, and P1 8 will be ready. Now let us discuss what else we can do with regard to pivot table. Sometimes what it happens, people, we need to present our date related information in pivot table, like we have got purchase order date, work order yeah. date, invoice date, or date of joining of the employee. If such kind of date related mm -hmm. fields are there in our data, how to present it in pivot table effectively, we are going to discuss. So before proceeding further with this, the unwanted fields, let's remove. So what is the unwanted fields like invoice count? You can drag it back. Revenue percentage, you can drag it back. And then you can also bring product description, deactivate. And again, year, you can deactivate. So only retain revenue, rest of fields you can deactivate. Yes. Now, once you have done with this over here, can you see above to the sales USD, we have a order date column in our field list box? Yeah. Bring that to the row area. And you will be finding your pivot yeah. table turns up like this. So what is that pivot table about? It's nothing but it is showing all the three years data having years, quarters, order date, something like this. Sometimes yeah. this kind of setup of pivot table doesn't make our people happy. So now the question is what you need to do. Go to our any of the year column value. 
right click open the same. There is an option you will be getting called ungroup. Able to see everybody ungroup. Yes. Yeah. And when you go and click ungroup with immediate effect, the entire setup will be vanished and it will neutralize the data and you will be finding the each and every date wise records. Mm, yeah. And if you are working up to 2013 version of Microsoft Excel, the data turns up like this. So those kind of automatically grouping option of our pivot table for the dates will be available only if you are there in 2016 and ever versions of Microsoft Excel. So now, having said this, keep your cursor in one of the date cell, right click up on that. You will be getting an option called group. Yeah. And when you click on the grouping tab, you will be finding a dialog box appearing, having the first invoice date and the last invoice date in starting and ending boxes. Yes. Yeah. And below to that, you will be finding already month is selected in blue color. Yeah. Then go for years also to select. And when you click OK, you can see a beautiful hierarchy yeah. of report year wise, month wise records are displayed. But looking at this, our friend Anirudh is not happy again. What he is demanding to Raghavendran stating that, Raghavendran, why don't you add one more hierarchy which will be stating the date wise records? Suppose in Jan, there are 10 invoices we have raised. So those 10 dates I want to see. So if that is the need, if that is the ask, how to present it? Again, keep your cursor in one of the year cell of the column, year column. Right click open that. Go for group again. Yeah. So when you go to the group option, you will be finding in the same box over here. We have an option called days as well, which is not selected. You can select now and the moment you click OK, you can see a beautiful hierarchy of report year wise, month wise, date wise record. So anybody who wish to see that they will be definitely happy by watching yeah. the presentation. So kindly confirm you got your pivot 8 ready the way we are discussing. Yes. Okay. Fine. So this kind of presentation, no doubt it takes our report to the next level, but one problem is there. You should not get confused because sometimes it creates a lot of confusion because of this kind of setup is I'll tell you just watch my screen. The moment you go for this kind of presentation people, it will generate two things, two additional columns for us naming called months and years. Okay. These are not our real time field. These are the virtual fields which is generated out of the date column and our real time fields are over here. So any point of time, if you want to analyze the data year wise, month wise, you should take these two fields, not these fields. Now the question is how to differentiate with a simple S. It's in singular, it's in plural. You can see that difference. Yes. So you have to take always these fields. OK. Not your months and years. This is the only thing you have to remember. So pivot eight, it is clear. Any question from anybody? No. Right. Now let's do one thing. Select pivot eight. Yeah. Any questions? What we have so weird a bit. That's okay. Fine. So now select your pivot eight sheet tab people holding the control button, drag it to the right. So one more pivot will turn up. Pivot table number nine. OK, now this date field work is over. You can remove order date, months, 
years, all these things you can remove. Now bring your first pivot table, whatever we had generated, like bringing product description to the rows here into the columns. So this is the first pivot table we had generated. Yes. Now, again, we are going to watch a beautiful concept of our pivot table naming called dashboard. So how to design a dashboard or how to create a dashboard while working in pivot? No doubt pivot is giving the reports one of the best one, no doubt about it, but yes. Along with this, how to take our presentations to the next level, giving more sophistications to the right. Well, in that case, first of all, let us have a basic understanding. What is this dashboard about? This is nothing new. The terminology we are quite aware of that. And in fact, in every second day, most of our friends or colleagues, they have been also telling about dashboard or the best example when you take your report along with multiple files and you are trying to present the same to your boss. Then what he says, the moment you start working from A to B, B to C file, he 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 says you hold on, hold on, professor, stop there. Do you think that I have got whole day to go through all your files? This is how people react. So what they expect, they say immediately, why don't you make a very simple report, one page of report or a dashboard? This is how people demand. And sometimes when you take many more information and you're trying to present it to your customer, to your stakeholders, to your management, they're also not happy. They also expect, why don't you make it very simple? So this is the place where my friends, nowadays the dashboard works with a hot cake in the market. And this is nothing but a one page of report. And this dashboards, most of the time, it consists of three elements. One, there should be a drop down, which will be helping the user to select a particular variable. And based on the selection, there should be a tabular data having the numbers or ready made stories to sell. And then based on the numerical value, there should be a immediate charts and graphs so that it will be showing the instant information to the user. So when you have all these three elements, we can classify that report or one page of report as a dashboard. All right. So theoretically, hope it is clear. What is the meaning by dashboard? Yep. <clears throat> so now, I'm going to take you through some real time dashboard reports so that it will be bringing more clarity what we are up to. What is that we are going to achieve at the end? It will be giving more clarity. So next three minutes, just watch my screen. Don't do anything on the screen, but stay focused. OK, so now I'm going to take you through some real time reports, people. OK, as I said, you no need to do anything. Just watch my screen. So I'll be taking you first, taking you through one HR dashboard. OK, so here the moment you look at this, this is one page of report people having all the necessary charts and graphs and some tabular data over here. Everything is over here. OK, now this is called one of the sophisticated report of one organization. You can notice in the left side all the department names are there and below to that the company's presence or offices are different location. That name is also listed. Last nine years data we have taken to analyze and these are the list of employees who are working in that industry or organization. Now, depending upon that, different different varieties of charts and graphs are there. So how it operates, how it works, I'll tell you. See, at any point of time, if somebody wants or somebody asks me, Prabhas, I want to see the entire headcount trend of HR department. So I'll go and choose HR from here and this chart is going to change. Just see, I'll choose human resource. Is it changing? Yes, immediately. Now, if I want to know in HR department, Los Angeles City, what is the headcount trend? So I'll HR I select. When I go and choose Los Angeles from this city name, this chart is going to change. See, I go and change. Is it changing immediately, instantly? Now, yes. if I want to show human resource, Los Angeles City in the year 2006, what is the breakup of salary? This is going to be changed. And based on this, this chart, and this chart is going to also change. Just see, human resource, Los Angeles, 2006. Is it changing? Yes, along with this is also changing. So all these things you can see on a click of button, it is happening. And to create this kind of sophisticated report, people, it needs time. It's not like just overnight put the formula and get the answer. No, 
you need to invest your time but that is one time investment and trust me if you create something like this people are going to retain that file for their whole life and to create this such kind of sophisticated dashboard you need to have ample data source nine years data it's not a joke you must have that then yeah. going to the calculations 90 percent calculations are pivot calculations whatever we have done since afternoon the same thing it has been done over here and the last sheet is to create or update the list like tomorrow suppose say a new year business i have included in the dashboard i need to update that suppose my organization they have opened a new location one more office i have to also update this a new department also introduced in the meantime i need to update this and if any employee leaves i need to eliminate if any employee joins i need to add all this record addition and deletion or updation purpose this sheet is also necessary so in the back end only i need to operate this this is just a one time job this will be doing for me and trust me nowadays people pay for it they get it outsourced and each and every dashboard roughly or on an average they spend near about to 25 to 30k over there oh yes mm -hmm. because i am taking this kind of assignments and right now i am working for three companies one is for lnt one is for hyundai and the other one is for bridgestone so these three projects are going yeah i mean people pay for that but, and if you know something but, yeah but nowadays uh, the power bi is uh, working like the same one that power I bi okay. is working but unless and until you have a power bi expert and they know how to yeah, create okay. such kind of calculations yeah. Yeah, so yeah. people are people yeah. know that but they don't know how to present it yeah. so there definitely we are making a difference okay. right yeah sure sure, sure. yeah right. you can you can you can create i mean this kind of reports in power bi as well even more better than this also you can create but unless and until you are trained with power bi features you can't do that yeah. Yeah. right yeah. 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 so this is one page of report again people now i am going to take you through one more dashboard about your sales dashboard just watch my screen So this is again one page of report of sales a company data sales records. You can see all the charts and graphs are populated and below to that you have got month, product categories, sales representative names and regions. All things are populated. Now any point of time, suppose say as a company CEO, I want to know what is the performance of my Eastern zone. I click Eastern zone. This is what the status on a click of button. Everything is changing. Now, if I want to know in Eastern zone, what is the performance of my salesman Jenny Paul? If I go and click, this is what the statistics of Jenny Paul. And based on that, these are the products and this is the region where he has made the more revenue and all the charts and graphs are reflecting the story. So more or less, we are going to create something like this. So hope you got a basic idea. What is that meaning by dashboard or what we are up to? Is it clear bringing some information? How about others? Only Anirudh is responding to that. OK, yeah, it's so, clear. right. So do you think that it is going to help you? Yeah. Are you interested in learning that? Yeah, excellent. Right, so yeah. at least not like that, more or less 50% of the work, if you could do it and deliver it as a dashboard, that will be a great achievement from the company perspective. It will be definitely an asset to the company, isn't it? So let's see now the objective is something like that, how to achieve it. So first thing first, whenever you prepare a dashboard people, certain ground rules you need to follow. What is the ground rule? Rule number one, when you take multiple objects, the alignment of the object should be pinpoint accurate. And when you take multiple objects, people, there should be some high definition, colorful buttons because that is going to add more beauty or add more flavor in terms of cosmetics looks to your dashboard. So you would have seen any dashboard you name it, definitely some high definition, colorful buttons would be there. So these are the basic ground rules always you need to follow. Now start working with me. Keep your cursor above to the pivot table. Above sir, to the pivot sir, table. Yeah. sir, just a I have one doubt. Uh, while uh, releasing this, uh, I could not get the original uh, thing uh, table. Some of sales first in the uh, this thing pivot. Hello. Ah, uh, my pivot. I have taken out. After that, product distribution, uh, uh, sales and year. Rakhna hai. 
मैंने सेल्स रखा है अभी मेरे इसके ऊपर तो उसके बाद प्रोडक्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन रखना है ना सर हाँ तो रोस में देखो पीवोट टेबल जो सब पहला पीवोट टेबल बनाया था वही रखना है कुछ नया हमने नहीं किया ईयर को लेके आना है कॉलम्स में प्रोडक्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन को रोस में और सेल्स यूएसडी को रेवेन्यू जो हमारा जो रेवेन्यू दिख रहा है यहाँ पे वहां पे सेल्स यूएसडी है अगर ये कन्फ्यूजन दे रहा है तो मैं इसको भी निकाल देता हूँ यहाँ पे सेल्स यूएसडी आ गया ठीक है लेकिन ये ग्रैंड टोटल आगे आ रहा है सबका हाँ तो आपका हाँ ठीक है आ रहा है कोई दिक्कत नहीं अगर आ रहा है तो एक काम करो पीवोट के ऊपर कर्सर रखो डिजाइन में जाओ लास्ट टाइप डिजाइन दिख रहा है यस डिजाइन में जाओ ग्रैंड टोटल एक ऑप्शन दिख रहा है लेफ्ट में से सेकंड ऑप्शन डिजाइन में लेफ्ट में से सेकंड हाँ उसमें उसमें आप सिर्फ ऑन करो ऑन फॉर कॉलम्स ओनली ऑन फॉर कॉलम्स ओनली ठीक है तो आप खाली उसको ऑन करो ना ऑन फॉर कॉलम्स ओनली रखो ये ऑप्शन को चूज करो ऑन फॉर कॉलम्स ओनली तो ऑटोमेटिक रो वाला ऑप्शन डीएक्टिवेट हो जाएगा नहीं हो रहा है सर ठीक है स्क्रीन शेयर करिए ये ओके हो गया मैं बोल रहा हूँ मिस मत करिए दो तीन मिनट आप कहीं पे ब्लैंक हो जाते हैं पता नहीं इसलिए मिस <laughs> वो सिग्नल चला जाता है वो फिर वो स्मेल अपड़ा हो गया था सॉरी आप इमीडिएटली आने के बाद मुझे रिमाइंड कर दिया करो ताकि मैं आपको हेल्प कर सकूं ओके सर चलिए कोई दिक्कत नहीं तो अभी आपका सेटअप ऐसा है प्रमोद जी यस 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 बिल्कुल ठीक है सो लेट मी टेक बैक द कंट्रोल ऑफ ऑन द स्क्रीन एंड मेक दिस ऑन या सो नाउ एज आई टोल्ड यू पीपल डू वन थिंग kindly keep your cursor above to the pivot table area the blank cells are there and go for a keyboard shortcut alt i r one by one alt i r ye kya karta hai this helps you to insert a row and to repeat the last action go for f4 and create some 10 to 15 blank row items above to the pivot area this is the first thing you should do Alt I R I. Alt I R I for insert R for rows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to repeat the last action F4. If it is not, you delete key go with function with F4. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Hope all of you have got 10 to 15 blank rows inserted above to the pivot area. Yes, 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 sir. Right. Yeah. See here, uh, we'll go step by step confirmation, people, because something I have yes. just conveyed and I can't come back. So this is the reason why I'm telling you, we'll go step by step confirmation. If anybody is missing, please feel free to ask. I can help you so that we can work together and proceed to the next level. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, keeping your cursor anywhere in pivot, go to our analyze or pivot table analyze ribbon menu tabs. Okay. there we have a beautiful option called insert slicer we have seen the same yeah. in our day 2 also okay in yeah. the sorting sheet the yeah. department wise able to our click on a button we can get the data right so we are going to discuss in detail today so go on click this insert slicer you will be getting a yeah. separate dialog box turns up having all the field headers listed in that box so this is called slicer so what is slicer about first let's have a discussion slicers are nothing but it works like a filter button the task what you do with filters same thing you can do with slicers also but only thing is this slicers are visually you can watch on your screen you can see all the filter variables on the screen that's why it is called as visual filter buttons okay but only thing is when you are going to integrate the same with pivot you need to follow a rule the rule says whatever the fields you have taken in pivot like we have taken year we have taken product description we have taken sales usd those things you should not choose as a slicer because that will be amounting as a duplication of fields and it is no more required as well so apart from all these three fields of pivot anything else you want to work or further analyze you should take that like we want to do customer wise analysis check that we want to do salesman wise analysis check that 
We want to choose region wise data. Check that. We want to see month wise record. Check that. Don't take months, month. I repeat. So you can cross check mm -hmm. customer, salesperson, region, month. All these four checkboxes has to be on. Okay. Now, once you go and click OK, you will be finding for the four slices, you can see four boxes will be ready. Yes, sir. Now, only thing is what you need to do, just watch my screen. The space, whatever we have created above to the pivot area, we need to align them, we need to arrange them. But how to align them? Just see. To select a particular slicer, you should select by the slicer name. Don't click in between anywhere, the blue color variables. Select the slicer name, hold it and drag it and populate like this. You can have your own order. There is no hard and first rule, but yes, take like this and arrange it. And you do that and confirm the alignment exactly. You have done like me. Yeah, it is done. It's done. OK. Just a minute, sir. Sure, sure. I'm waiting. That's why I told you. Taking the all the confirmation only, I'll proceed because I cannot come back again. So all the slicers, yeah. Done. Yes. Done. Okay. So ensure that all the slicer variables all are in blue color. Everyone is having blue color. There is no white blue combination or anything. All are in yes, blue yes. color only. Yes. Right. Now, though we have made all the slicers people, but the thing is the slicers look and feel is not so great. So we need to work with the cosmetics works for our slicer. So what we can do is select one of the slicer. You will be finding in your ribbon menu one extreme right one slicer tab is activated. It again different. Yes. I mean, it will be different name for the different version of Excel. Maybe tools or options or design or slicer naming would be different. But extreme right. Do you see a slicer button like this? Yes, with the, yes. With slicer. And you might be having as design tools options. Home insert layout formula data review option. Uh, yes, option. Yes, option is there, correct? Yes, sir. Click that. And the moment you go for it, can you see we have got slicer styles, one category slicer styles, different, different colorful designs are displaying? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Go for the more button. It will open up with two broad categories like light and dark. Like earlier we used to do light, medium, dark, but here there is no medium, so don't be worried. Now, ideally here we need to go for dark. The reason is I told you okay. we need to have the colorful buttons. Mm -hmm. So select one dark color again. One more slicer, one more dark color again. One more slicer, one more dark color. So like that four different slicer, four different dark colors we can choose. This is the first thing we should do. Sir, please wait. Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting only. I'm waiting for your confirmation. So you do this and drop me a message. D for done or Y for yes. It is done. It's in. It's not uh, getting the all colors. It's only getting the one row in one row. That is what from what I told you. Don't click inside of the slicer variable. Of course, slicer ko select karna hai, or fill color karna hai. Apne already click kar diya hoga. Isliye problem aa raha hai. Dekho, ye jo slicer hai, aapke right side mein dekho slicer ka right side jo cone color filter dikh raha hai. Ye activate dikh raha hai. Cross mark dikh raha hai usme. Cross mark hai sir. Ha, usko click karo. उसको okay. क्लिक करो अभी पूरा का पूरा कलर दिखेगा यस 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 हां गॉट इट एक मिनट बाकी का कर दो हम्म
सर ये कौन से टैब में अभी वो आप सिलेक्ट करना सकते हैं ऑप्शंस आएगा एक स्लाइसेस ऑप्शंस आ गए आ गए इट्स डन सर ओके नाउ फ्रेंड्स जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट माय स्क्रीन वन मिनट अगेन सी Though we have made all these colorful changes, but having this kind of vertical scroll bars in each and every slicers, it is not giving such a great look. Can you see that? Yes, sir. So now the question is how to remove the same. So what we can do? Just one minute, watch my screen. If I select a particular slicer, in the same slicers or options tab, you will be finding one option called columns, and by default, columns will be showing one for every one. Can you confirm? Is it showing yes. the columns? Yes. Everybody thinks yes. one. Right. Yes. In option. Yes. Right. So you have to go and increase that column number. So if you see, when I'm increasing, my entire variables of customer is now distributing to multiple columns. Yes. Yes. Now only thing problem is I'm unable to see all my customer names. No worries. I can simply hold it and drag it like this. So my entire variables yeah. now it will be displayed. Similarly, I'll go for repeating my region. I can change it to three, and salesperson I can make it three. It's up to you. There is no hard and fast rule that you should make it three. It depends upon the variables. So now, when I go for it, I could see my regions. I can't see all those regions, so I can make it a little bit larger. So like that, I did all my slices, and I'm able to present it. So kindly confirm you able to distribute your all your slices variables into multiple columns. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> Fine then. So I'm working with full screen. Anybody is having any doubt or queries, please unmute and speak. Okay. Now, once we have done with this, kindly select one of the slicers select and go for slicer. Control A. Control A. Okay. And once you do this, you can notice in the same slicers or options tab there is an option called Align. Align will be there after selection pane. You can see Align will be there. Yeah. Yeah. And in this align, you have to go for align top. Yeah, align top. Align top. Okay. Then immediately go for align again and choose distribute horizontally. Okay. Why yeah. distribute horizontally? Because the spacing between the slices also has to be uniform. That's why distribute horizontally. And last step, don't ever forget, people, is next to align. There is an option called grouping. Group. Yeah. In that group, you have an option called group also inside. So just go and click that group option. So now this four slicer will be turned into a single object, just a single object. This is very very essential. If you do not do so, what will be happening? Now the entire efforts, whatever we have made, formatting we have done, the alignment we made it, everything will go in vain. So this is what the last step. Don't ever forget alignment along with that grouping. So kindly uh, confirm. Sir, everybody has done alignment with grouping. Yes, sir. sir I, yeah, I, I did not do. क्या हुआ कहाँ पे प्रॉब्लम हुई? Control ये बोल रहे थे ना आप सर? हाँ, एक स्लाइसर को पहले सिलेक्ट करो, फिर कंट्रोल ले. एक स्लाइसर को सिलेक्ट किया कंट्रोल ये किया देन चारों स्लाइसर सिलेक्शन पे आए यस सर नाउ गोइंग टू द ऑप्शंस गोइंग टू द ऑप्शंस टैब अलाइन उसमें yes. पहले जाओ अलाइन टॉप अलाइन टॉप ओके फिर से अलाइन जाओ डिस्ट्रीब्यूट हॉरिजॉन्टली डिस्ट्रीब्यूट हॉरिजॉन्टली यस हां उसके बाद नेक्स्ट टू अलाइन ग्रुपिंग ऑप्शन है ग्रुप अलाइन के बाजू में ओके ओके हाँ ग्रुप के अंदर ग्रुप मिलेगा ग्रुप को क्लिक करो 
Yes. ब्यूटीफुलटम साइड all the empty spaces yes. are there correct yes yes so that yes. doesn't look good we need to remove them but how to remove just see on my bottom side of this grouped object there is a button over here this button i have to take this and i have to take this in this way i have to reduce the height but ensure that while doing the process you are not regaining the status of your vertical scroll bar in any of the slicers you have to careful on that yeah So kindly confirm everybody has done with our slicers working like this. all right so now once we have done with this people what is the next step you need to do is between the slicers and pivot whatever the uh, guys anybody's mic is on could you please make it on mute between the slicers and pivot whatever your empty spaces are there the rows items whatever you have kindly select and go for deleting the same delete the rows okay now once you have done with this this pivot table fields what you see on the right side this box is no longer playing a role you can deactivate that you can see i'm highlighting my cursor so this button you have to deactivate to close this pivot table field list box then pivot table is ready slicers is ready the next element what you need is a charts so keeping your cursor in the pivot anywhere if you go to your analyze or pivot table analyze in the immediate right can you see pivot chart one option is there kindly click on that and once you go for pivot chart people it will take you to your entire chart family okay and here no need to do any changes straight away go and click okay a chart will be ready and that chart you have to hold it and you have to drag it next to the data you need to align it and then extend the chart width exactly in line of your slicer tab okay so we got slicers ready we got pivot table along with our pivot chart also ready Pivot 
pivot chart from the pivot table analyze you'll be getting it if you keep your cursor pivot pivot table analyze pivot chart is there uh, this one, yeah. Yeah, now, once you have your pivot chart ready, people, what you need to do to give a better feel of your chart over here, you can see the beauty thing is, or the beautiful thing, what you have for your chart is some ready made filter buttons like year one filter button, product description one filter button is already available. You will never find such filter buttons in your regular charts. These are the exclusive property of your pivot chart only. And having the chart in place when you select, can you see one design button activated on your ribbon again? Next to analyze or pivot table analyze. Do you see all a yes, design yes. button activated? So go to design yes. and you see there are a lot of chart styles are available. So go for the more button and take the last one blindly take the last one. The reason is if you take the last style compared mm -hmm. to the other versions of your chart styles, this one will be going a bit better look and feel. It will be giving some embossing effect or it will be giving some kind of glossy impact. That's why go for the last option. And the moment you choose this over here. Oh, sorry, sir. Uh, sorry. No problem. So where do you uh, design? Where did you get the charts? Uh, my design will be not able to figure out the charts. No, no, you have not populated the chart. No, because the question is whether the chart is there or not. Yes, with I, got you. It. So, I got it now. Got it now. I click the design, I click the chart and I went to charts. Okay. Okay. Now the next thing is if you look at the chart, you could see. There is some unwanted grid lines are available. So now the objective is how to remove all these unwanted grid lines. So this is called your unwanted grid lines. OK, this is what we need to remove. To remove the same, select your chart towards your right or left. You will be having this kind of plus symbol, plus symbol. OK, when you just click on the plus symbol, a dialog box appears having some checkboxes where the grid lines checkbox is on. You can deactivate that. And immediately click on the plus symbol. Now the chart is neat and clean completely. All right. So we got all the necessary setups, formattings, alignment, everything is done. So can you please confirm people? Yes. Yes. Right. Now. Stay focused, please. Whatever we did so far. Anybody can do like this. We have not done something rocket science over here, not some extraordinary job. Now, if you remember, I told you whenever you are presenting, make sure that your presentation is different from others. But how to do that? Now the time has come to discuss. See, whenever you have this kind of dashboards or one page or report, you are presenting people. Remove the unwanted stops from the window. Unwanted stops in the sense. The column headers is unwanted. The formula bar is unwanted. The row headers is unwanted. But how to remove all this? Just say, keep your cursor anywhere in a blank cell, anywhere in a blank cell of this entire worksheet and go to the view tab. You will notice there are three options over here in this tab called formula bar, grid lines, headings. All the check boxes are on. Can you see that? In the view tab, these three options is on. Yeah, yeah, we can see. So kindly deactivate all these three. Formula bar, headings, and grid lines. Yes. Now, once you deactivated, what is the other things is unwanted? Like the ribbon bar, the menu options. If you see, this ribbon bar is not playing any role in this kind of report. But how to deactivate? We can't deactivate. We can only hide and unhide. So to hide the ribbon bar, you can go for a simple keyboard shortcut control F1. Control F1, just see it's a toggle key, same key to hide, same key to unhide. Can you see that? 
No, I can't do that. Uh, control F1. If it is not your direct key, go with function control F1. Okay. Where right uh, should I put the cursor? In the ribbon? No, button. cursor wherever. Cursor wherever it is in the any any okay. any okay. blank cell anywhere. No problem. Control. Okay. I mean, ideally, how you used to go for F4 function F4 or F4 for the dollar symbol. Oh, the okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. So you have to go for function okay. control F1 if it is not your direct key. So same key to activate or deactivate or hide or unhide of your ribbon menu. Now, if you look at your own screen, are you getting the feeling like as if we have a blank page is there and entire report is embedded on that? Yes. Yes, yes. Right. So now, once we have done up to this, I believe everybody is with me. Yes. Now, once we have done with this, being a presenter people, please stay focused with one thing. Always remember that when you are presenting something to the audience, do not show many more information to the user. The more the information you show, the more the questions you are going to invite. And you don't have your whole day to make this presentation in the meeting, correct? So ideally in the meeting, how many hours or how many minutes we are getting maximum 10 to 15 minutes. We don't get whole day or one hour or two hour to showcase. Do you agree? Yes. So within that 15 minutes timeline, we have to do our homework in such a way. We need to make our presentation. We need to answer all the questions what audience is having. And finally, we need to give our own interpretation as well. So in this case, you would have thought something. What is the treatment you are going to do with the sheet tabs? I to hide it. Right. Ideally, we do that. Fine. I can hide all these things, but I can I cannot hide pivot table number nine because that is my core business area. I have to keep that option open on. Now, suppose say I have hidden everything. I have kept my pivot nine open and I'm showing the same to my audience. And while doing the process accidentally or by mistake, my pivot nine right click mouse of or mouse right click is enabled. So definitely you would be noticing that this unhide button will be activated. Yes or no? Yes, yes. So audience is smart enough to understand if unhide is activated means you have hidden something. Now suppose say Correct. in front of me, my vice president is sitting and he's asking me, Prabhas, just click on that unhide button. Can I say no? Or can I say to my vice president, sir, whatever you are looking for, it is there in pivot nine. Why you are asking unwanted questions? Can I say something to my vice president in the meeting like this? No. no, no never. So what is the point then? Now I have to showcase all this unwanted information, but that is not under my control and I can't say no to my audience and my entire presentation is gone in vain. So I am deviating from the core business area and people are not interested to watch that. And the person who is interested that is not giving any kind of amusement to others because that is not being informative for others. So in this yeah. case, being a presenter, I cannot blame to my audience. I cannot blame to my vice president. So we have to do something. So what is the point? Hide your sheets and anybody can unhide that. Doesn't make any sense. Hide in such a way nobody should ever know that what you have hidden. And people should watch what you are presenting. They should not ask one more question. Then only it makes sense. Do you all agree? Yes. yes right. Yes. So exactly. how to do it? Last step. Don't forget. Go to the file menu, people. File menu. Can you see we have yeah. a options called over here in the bottom extreme left options tab is there? Yeah. Yeah. Go for that. If you click, it will take you to your Excel options dialog box on the screen where you could see in the left the categories naming called advanced. Yeah. And in this advanced category, when you click towards your right, there is a scroll bar in that window is available. You can take the scroll bar somewhere in the middle. You will be finding a section called display. And in this yeah. display, there is a subsection called display options for this workbook. 
and the third tab is deals with show sheet tabs and by default it is on for everyone can you see yes so this option is to be disabled and the moment you click ok see the beauty so what we need to do we have to go to our file menu we have to go for options within that advanced within that scroll bar i need to move it to the middle then there is a section called display and within that yeah. display options for this workbook and the show sheet tab options by default it is on we need to deactivate and finally we need to go and click ok, okay. and once you do so see the beauty what happens so even though somebody tries hard, nobody will be knowing that what you have done, where is your core business area, where is the workings, where is your source data and what you are presenting except you. Nobody will be having that knowledge. So hope everybody has got the same set of people. Yes. Yeah. Now. The moment you have done with this next one minute, just focus on my screen. OK, over here. Suppose say this is what our friend Raghavendra has prepared and now under this coming and asking a question. Raghavendra, are you done? Are you good to go for the presentation area? He's saying yes. Now under has gone to the meeting area and he has greeted to all our delegates and then he has asked to our friend Raghavendra. OK, you can start the show. Now, when Raghavendra has started this file and he has opened in front of the audience. Now, Anil is saying that Raghavendra, we do not want to see all the three years data. Kindly focus on only 2021. So what we can do over here, Raghavendra will immediately go to the year filter and there he can choose 2021 over here. And immediately all the data of 2021 will be displayed on the screen and anybody who is looking at the revenue data, they can see the focus on the pivot table and anybody who wish to go for our real time charts and graphs, they can go for the 2021 data. Now looking at the same, suppose our friend Raghavendra is presenting next to Anirudh, chief marketing officer is sitting. Then he asked a question to Raghavendra stating that Raghavendra, if this is the history of 2021, can you please show me the performance of salesman 5 for the year? So we have a slicer salesman. We can choose SM5. Yeah. So this is the status of SM5 for the year 2021. Now looking at the same, the chief marketing officer, he kept quiet for a while and immediately asked one more question. What is that? That if this is the history of salesman 5 for the year 2021, can you please show me his performance for the month of May? I can go to month. I can select May and this is what the status. Only one product he has sold to whom? To Lee Motors. Whose country? Africa. So on a click of yeah. button, everything is happening. And this is what we call it as people. When you integrate your slicers with pivot table and pivot chart, that's nothing but a dashboard or one page or report. So kindly confirm all these things are happening the way we have discussed. Yes. For multiple data, multiple regions, you have to click control. Yeah, how do you select multiple options? Holding the control button, right? Similarly, you can showcase that. Suppose, say, take an example. I want to showcase of salesman 5 and as well as salesman 2. I will clear first. To restore my data, I need to clear all the slicers filter operations in the bottom right corner. You can see. Now I want to showcase in the year 2021 both the salesman like salesman 2 and salesman 5 i'll go and select holding the control button salesman 2 and salesman 5 this is what the combined effort of these two salesmen right people so i believe everybody is able to navigate the way i have shown you on the screen any doubt any queries in this
problem. Right. Now, question is how to restore our data. See, the way we have operated similarly, we have to go and clear the things like if you see each and every slicers top right corner is cone kind of structure called clear filter. You have to keep clicking on that. Whichever the slicers you have operated with the top right corner, you have to click. This is the first thing. Next in the chart, we have operated with the year filter. You can go and clear filter from the year also. Then keep your cursor anywhere in the pivot table. Keep your cursor anywhere in the pivot table or anywhere in the blank cell. Better I would suggest keep your cursor anywhere in the blank cell. What are the other things we need to activate? If you remember the sheet tabs, correct? So many pivot tables we have created. We need to uh, again bring it back. Same option going to file. Yeah. Options. Advanced. Advanced. Yeah. Scroll down. Display. And within the display options for this workbook, show sheet tabs. At the moment, you deactivate. It was in deactivate state, so you have to activate this. And click OK, and you got all your sheet tabs restored. Now, what are the other things to be restored? Column. Like going to the view tab, keeping the cursor in a blank cell, going to the view tab, grid lines. Headings, Even. formula bar. So all these three options from the view tab also needs to be activated. Point. So now, once you have done with this, what is the add on you can do? I'll tell you to give more beautify this report. What you can do, I'll tell you. Just watch my screen. This is for information. No need to do all these things. When you do the practicing all this, you can do that. See, whenever you have this kind of reports, people, you can give more add on to your data in this format. Like take an example. This is a dashboard, right? So I'll go to my insert. I'll go for my ships. I'll take a rectangular shape. And over here, I'll go for shape fill. Something dark gray. And text color, I'll make it white. How do we add the row? Oh, sir. Alt I R. I type Alt I R, but where did I click to get Alt I R? Where, where exactly? I did not get you. I, I actually fill the entire top row with the, the headings of this sales person region mark customer. How do I, I just click Alt I R? I can't see the thing coming up. No, no, no. Alt I R for inserting a row. It is not a menu ribbon command. It's the earlier versions of Microsoft Excel, the ribbon keys, keyboard shortcuts. So you just complete yes, the step. R, okay. I said Alt. One by one. I First Alt, R. Alt, you remove the finger, then I, then remove the finger, then R. You can see a row will be inserted. Uh, where do I keep the cursor, sir, exactly? No need to no need to see wherever you want to insert. Suppose say I want to insert between these two. I can keep your cursor over here. Alt I R. You can see a row will be inserted over here. I want to go for one more. I can go for Alt I R. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. So now I'm just naming it. This is just for information. No need to do all these things. OK, so when you're doing the practice, you can do that. But just learn how to beautify your reports exactly technically. So this is what I have prepared. Suppose say dashboard or it, it is something say HR dashboard. I'm making it or it is a sales dashboard. Something I'm making it. OK, now I'll go for this and I will increase my font size. Of sales dashboard. Okay. 
Now the sales dashboard, uh, guys, anybody's mic is on. Could you please keep it on mute? So if I go for sales dashboard now to give a feel that it's about related to sales we are discussing, I can go to insert. And if you are in there, Office 365 or 2019, we have got a very beautiful information called icon. So I can take this icon option and will be connecting to the Microsoft Office server. I can go for something, say charts or grab something. Yeah, so there are beautiful charts and all everything will be populating. I'll be taking this over here to showcase or I'll be take this. That will be more better. And here. So these things it comes up. I can increase a little bit and I'll show you it over here. So I'll change the color to white. OK, and then I'll be going for a little bit of shadow on that. Looks cool. Like when you are serving a dish, right? When you're serving a dish, if you're garnishing well, though the dish is a full tasty, no doubt, but the garnishing also giving an add on to the data, add on to the food, right? Yeah. Similarly, yeah. this is how you can give more add on. Nothing much. We have created a shape. We have added the text. We have gone and placed an icon. That's it. Sir, uh, how do you get that uh, particular background black color? It's a dark color. It's not a black color. It's a dark charcoal gray. You can say you can go to shape format, shape fill. You can go for the second column. This option. It's the gray color. Format. I don't know. Getting the shape format. No, have you created a shape first? Did you insert a shape? See these things. You comes out of your shapes. Insert going to shape. You can take a rectangle. And you have to draw that. It's not a cell, it's a shape. Like the moment you do the same thing in your PowerPoint, nothing much. It's nothing, something new I am telling you. All these things you must be doing in your PowerPoint. So we are giving an add on flavor to your dashboard. So you'll be presenting the dashboard in a more beautiful format. Yes, so I believe you got a flavor and everyone is clear with our pivot table number nine, whatever we discussed. Any doubt, any queries from anybody? So how do you actually if you are working with 365 in insert, you will be having an option called icons. Check if it is there, you can get that kind of icon what I showed you. If it is not there, then you have to upgrade your Microsoft Office applications to 365. OK, sir. Would you write shape, uh, shape uh, says dashboard where you type it? No, no. Did you create the shape first? Yeah, I created it got black. I got huh. the black shape. Yeah. OK, then you type in that. Just select that shape and type sales dashboard type. Yeah, correct. And then you select the entire text and increase the font size somewhere around to 70 to 80 or 60 to 70, whichever depends in the home tab. You can select and click on that. So automatically the font size will be increased. And this kind of icon I told you if you are in Office 365, this kind of icon you can generate from the insert icons over here. We have a ready made inventory. Yes, I got it, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, or no, you had a question. Uh, actually, uh, I, I um, lost these one, this column and uh, row button, the A, B, C, and one, two, three. How did you get that? Yeah, you have to go to a view tab. Keep your cursor in a blank cell. Go to the view tab. You have the options like grid lines, headings, formula bar, oh, all these three options you need to activate. Oh. Oh, it is a heading one. Okay. Yeah. And that icon tool that uh, I went there, but uh, insert icon. When I put this, set, no, no, it's, it's, I'm talking about this uh, creating this dashboard font uh -huh. that you have prepared. Uh -huh. uh, that that in the icon club, if, if you, you just click on the icon club. Right. Okay, if I uh, type sales uh, data, I can't no, find so that. Sales. You go for chart. You go for chart, not the oh, sales. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, if the keyword yeah. chart, you will be getting so many icons. So it should be giving a better feel for you. And depends. It's up to you can go oh. and keep on exploring all these things. You can see we have oh, got some options of images, mm -hmm. cartoon people, all these things. In, in when you go for cartoon yeah, people, yeah. 
you can take that a lot of things are there okay okay, okay. Got it, right. got it. yeah thank so, you i mean see this, this these are nothing but your infographic presentations nowadays people are demanding a lot from you i mean if you go to any corporate wherever yeah. you are working with they ask do something mm -hmm. creative add something innovative ideas yeah. styles in excel what you can do what kind of innovation you can add it but people are expecting can't help you have to do okay so this is how you can give some more add on to the data all right so i believe everybody is clear whatever we did so far am i right yeah yeah right now just one minute focus on my screen people though you made this kind of beautiful presentations but sometimes some specific people they will be objecting for some specific things what is that i'll tell you suppose say our friend anirudh has got i mean he's quite satisfied the way our friend raghavendran has done it then he just asked one thing that raghavendran everything is fine but just can't you do remove all these things so what Anirudh is saying, this is unwanted. Kindly remove this. Rest of things are good. It looks so elegant, lucrative, and eye-catchy. But I don't want to see this number. These are boring. This is what Anirudh is saying. So hope all of you have got that. What people are having the objection? Yes. Right. So now, how to remove this? Because that is our core business area. So if I remove my pivot table, then whole entire things will be collapsed. So in this case, how to manage the show? I'll tell you one thing, people. If you are connected to projector, disconnect. Or if you are presenting something by showing your monitor, disconnect the monitor also. Turn the monitor towards you. What you need to do is don't take any extraordinary efforts over here. Take this chart and cover your pivot table data, something like this, and extend this. That's it. If people are looking for something, right, they will say, okay, Prabhas, show me the Dalma motors. I'll go and click Dalma motors. This is the Dalma motors data. If they want to see Dalma motors in the month of March, how it is the status, this is what the status. Only one product that to 2019, it has been sold. And the product name is suppose a hexa. Could be the case. Pretty easy. So no need to go for some extraordinary efforts and spending your premium time for the unwanted job people are demanding. So don't you think the trick will be really great? Yes, yes. Right. It so it's all about your presentation techniques and styles, how you are applying to give me add on to the data. So that comes out of your experience or that comes to comes out of your uh, whatever the uh, tricks you have explored, the Microsoft Office applications technologies, and you can bring the same. Nobody is going to teach you that, but features remains the same. Only thing is those tricks, whatever you are using, that makes you different. So that's the story of our pivot table number nine people. OK, now do one thing. Go to pivot table number eight. Uh, sir, uh, before that, uh, one clarification. Mm -hmm. like, uh, the file which you show, right? Uh, for example, the sales and the HR, you have multiple pivots over there, right? Like multiple charts. Yes, uh, yes. So yeah, how to create that portion now? So that portion, that's what I told you. One pivot, one chart. Again, multiple pivot, multiple charts. So one one data, one one particular Excel sheet. You have to keep creating only the pivot table. The other sheet, you will be keep creating only the charts. That's all. We are going to discuss that. That will be giving more clarity in the next step. Don't worry. Okay. So pivot eight. Please select pivot eight sheet tab and. Holding the control button, drag it to the right, and you'll be having pivot 10 over here. Okay. So keeping your cursor in the pivot table, if this pivot table fields is missing, simple right click, you can see show field list. One option will be there. Show field list. All right, now remove the unwanted fields like order date, months, quarters. Remove the unwanted fields out of this. And bring product description to the rows and year to the columns. Don't bring years, year to the column. Now 
if you want to bring your grand total also over here, we know keeping the cursor in the data in the pivot table, go to design grand total and there you go for on for rows and columns. Second option. On for rows and columns. So kindly confirm you got the status like this, then we discuss further. For getting the what table fields. Right, uh, to the right, you have to call them. Very good, sir. Yeah, I did not get you, bigness. Sorry, uh, please go slow, please. In the pivot table fields to the right, you have uh -huh. it in the screen. You have three, four fields. That particular tab has to be opened. Right, you have to go for right click on the pivot. List. Yeah, you have to go for right click okay. on pivot, show field list in the bottom. You will be finding one option. Okay, yes, I got it. Yeah, yeah. All right, people. So I believe everyone is ready with our pivot table. Uh, just one second, sir. Grand total only. Sorry, sorry, Raghavanda. I want to bring the grand total. Uh, so insert. Uh, if you yeah, go there. You have, no, 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 not insert, not insert. If you go to grand total, means keeping the cursor and pivot, go to design. Go to design and in the grand total, the second option from the left on for rows and columns. You need to activate. Yeah, OK. All right, so now what we are going to do, let's have a discussion upon that first. See, since afternoon, if you have been watching, we have created many more pivot tables, but in each and every worksheet, there is a unique pivot table. Do you all agree? Yes, absolutely. So one Excel worksheet, one pivot table. That That is fine to display and to understand. What if? I need to present multiple pivot table in one interface. So more than one pivot table, if I need to present it, how to present that? That is what we are going to discuss. So let's do one thing. Keep your cursor in the first pivot table, whatever you have, select the same, Control A, Control C. Control to copy. A, Control C. Then leaving one or two rows down, please paste it. Leaving two rows down, please paste it. So you can see we have got one more pivot table ready. Kindly confirm one more pivot is ready. Yes. Yes. So now let's have a discussion. The moment you copied and pasted, what do you believe? Is it the same pivot table or these are two different pivot tables? Same pivot table. The same one. OK, good. Technically, information wise, these are same, but Nature wise, these are two different pivot table. How to show that just see. Keep your cursor in the first pivot table and right click upon that. Do you see an option called from the bottom second one pivot table options? Yes. If you click yeah. that, do you see a pivot table name? It is being displayed in that box. Yes. Yeah. What is the, what is the number? Yes, it, it may be one. different. Yeah, it may be different to case to case. No worries also, but remember the name for the timing. Remember the name. Okay. So for me, it is pivot table one. For you also, if it is pivot table one, well and good, no problem. Now go to the second, which is below pivot table, right click pivot table options and check. Is it showing something different name? Pivot table 11 showing could be no, 11, 12. 13, 15, 21. No worries, but is it different one? Yes. Yeah. Right. So this is a proof that though we have copied or pasted, but technically these are two different pivot table. Clear? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now 
There is no point having the same information in the both the pivot tables. Let's do one thing. Keep your cursor in the second pivot table and deactivate product description. Deactivate product description and bring customer to the row area. Bring customer to the row area. Okay. And go to the design tab and color it something different so that you can easily differentiate that these are two different pivot tables. Yes. Yeah. Next thing is, I'll tell you a beautiful technique of our pivot is if you look at in our customer wise revenue report, if you look at there are n number of customers are there, correct? Yes. Yeah. Technically, when you are presenting your information to the audience, they don't want to see the entire customer's data. What is the focus point? What people are more interested at is top five, top 10, top 15. Yes those things they want to see. So for that, go to our customer filter. Go to our customer filter. Do you yes. see an option yes. called value filters? Yes. yes. Within that, yes. can you see then the bottom top 10 is there? Yes. Yeah. Go and click the top 10 and you see instead of 10, you can make it to five. Suppose I want to showcase only top five customers value. You can customize that. If you want to show top three, that also you can customize. If you want to show bottom five, there is a button over here. You can showcase bottom five also. So top bottom, you can choose out of this. It's a beautiful option, which we never explored. Trust me. Yes. Yeah. 80% people they are not using at all. Well, so going forward, use this. It will be more effective. Now, the moment you go and click OK, you can see only top five customers revenue data is displayed on the screen. Yes. yes. Now do one thing. Go to our grand total column. Mm -hmm. Keep the cursor in any of the customers grand total cell value. Right click and go for sort largest to smallest. Mm -hmm. Similarly, go to our first pivot table. Keep the cursor any of the products grand total. And select right click sort largest to smallest. So all these things we did. Hope it is clear what we did. Yeah. Now. One more thing always keep in your mind people whenever you are going for multiple pivot tables to be displayed one one interface. Do all your necessary formattings first like this, whatever we have adjusted the column width, everything you do. But the problem is whenever you change your data, your formats will get disturbed. So to re just to retain that format, whatever we have finalized, we have to deactivate certain things. What is that? I'll tell you. Go to our pivot one, right click, and from the bottom second one, from pivot the table second options. One. Okay. Yes. And yes. there we have an option over here. People can see auto fit column widths on update. Checkbox is activated. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That you need to deactivate. That you yeah. should do at the last stage. Once you have done with all your formattings that you should do on your last stage and same thing you repeat for your below pivot table also right click. Pivot table options and auto fit column width on update. This has to be deactivated. And when you click OK, you now click things okay. are final. So kindly confirm all this formatting confirm patterns, all everything formatting is done. Yes. Yeah, yes. Now, this pivot oh. table fields is pivot not playing any more role. Not. So guys, anybody's mic is on. Could you please put it on mute because it's echoing. So this pivot table fields dialog box, whatever we see on the right side, people, it is no more required. We can go for it. OK, we can close that. No problem. Now. Keep your cursor in the first pivot table and go to our analyze or pivot table analyze. OK, go for pivot chart. Go for pivot chart. And click OK. Now chart is ready. 
So what you need to do is give some spacing between the data and the chart and then the extend your chart like this. Similarly, repeat for the same to the pivot table, which is below, keeping the cursor, pivot table analyze, pivot chart, and click OK. Do all your necessary formattings, whatever we have learned, like going to design, and which style? Take the last one. Then to remove the unwanted grid lines, you can click on the plus symbol and deactivate the grid lines checkbox. Yeah, done. Now, once we have done with this, keep your process in the first pivot table and go to our analyze or pivot table analyze. We have a option insert slicer. When you click that. It will open all those slicers purpose, whatever the fields we have and suppose say I want to see my region wise data, so I activate my region slicer out of this. And the moment I click OK. You will be finding my region slicer is on. I can take that and I can align this in the space, whatever we have in between the pivot table and the charts, whatever the spacing, I will be aligning the same. OK, now to add some more flavor, I can beauties add some colors also. And did it. So all these things I have done. So I got two pivot tables. I got two pivot charts. I got one slicer also ready over there on the screen. Fine, clear? Yeah. Right. How about others, people? That's done. Okay. Bigness, what is the status? Uh, it's done. OK, great. Fine, now once you have done this, just have a look at my screen people for a minute. See, we did all the slices also. We have created no doubt about it, but when I go and operate, suppose say I want to see my Russia data. This is giving an impact only to my first pivot table. Can you see? Yes. So what is the, what is the point of having multiple pivot tables and multiple charts? Those are become idle. It is just giving the data effect to the pivot table one only, not for the others. So now the question is how to connect all these slices to these two pivot table and pivot charts as well, so that we can work further on this. 
So what you can do is people just select your slicer. With the slicer name, select your slicer and just right click upon that. And when you go for right click, do you see an option called report connections? Yes, yes, yes. And when you click the report connections, it will take you to a dialog box. You can notice it is showing all yes. the list of pivot tables, whatever we have created and which is exactly connected to that slicer. That checkbox okay. alone is on. Can you see that? Yes. Now below to that, whatever the pivot table we had, we had seen in our right click pivot table name. So that is pivot table 13 for my case. It is not on. I need to activate this. This is the only thing I need to do. And once I do this and click OK, mm -hmm. now the things are ready. Any point of time I want to showcase what is the status of Thailand. I can click on Thailand and this is what the status. So these are the products. We, it has been sold to Thailand in 2021. Only the business is there and these are my top five customers of Thailand and this is what the charts and graphs also telling the same story. If I want to showcase my Argentina data, this is my Argentina data. If it is Ukraine, this is Ukraine. If it is Africa, this is Africa. On a click of button, everything is happening. So this is how people when you want to work with multiple people tables, multiple charts, you have to create the connections through the slicers and you can operate. OK. Got it, sir. Got it. Right. So. Hope okay. you got your answer. Uh, so from, same, uh, yes, got yes, because. Uh, so. For next time. We would chart and keep cropping that in the same sheet and on so we can keep changing the details of this uh, particular field row column fields accordingly and then we can create a particular uh, uh, slicer and we can connect everything and we can arrange it is it clear absolutely one particular thing we can do it. absolutely so that is what the answer for the question what raghavendran also asked the i showed you one dashboard only charts and graphs was there but pivot table calculations was there in a separate sheet the same thing so here you can take these charts and present it in a different sheet just control x control y you can give it in a different sheet and you can keep connecting multiple pivot tables to a slicers and you can operate not a problem all right how many how many pivot we can connect sir n number n number n number there is no restrictions over here as long as your interface is compatible with your uh, charts and graphs you can keep creating Sir, I have doubts. Yeah. So control X, Control Y, you have to say what is Control X, Control X, Control V. I mean, Control Y means on a redo. Control X, Control V. Control X for cut, Control V for paste. Suppose say, now if I create one more sheet over here, say, this is what I name it as my final report. I want to showcase my final report. Okay. Now this chart, whatever somebody has turned in, who is that? Okay, from all the. See, this is the chart I had. This is the chart I had. OK, I'll select both control X. I'll go to this sheet. I will paste it. Now these two charts are ready. OK, now I will take this also this slicer control X and over here control V. I'll put it across. No problem. Now suppose say I, I create one more pivot table control A control C. I'm putting it across control V. OK, now in this pivot table, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to uh, take it over here. Say take an example, show field list. I don't want to take the customer. I want to take the salesperson in the row area. So last three years, whatever the salesman report is there. Now this also will be containing one pivot chart. OK, I click it. Now this pivot chart, I'll be connecting where control X and I'll be putting it across control V. Just a minute. Now this pivot chart, whatever I have, OK. I'm going with full screen just saying so that I can operate comfortably. Now this is one more chart. Now this one I want to change it to suppose say something different. Say line chart. We'll go discuss the chart types tomorrow. Don't worry for the timing. You just see the screen how I'm presenting over here. Now I have presented salesperson wise last three years data over here. OK. And this suppose say I don't want to showcase over here. 
and this data. I want to say something like this. Now this chart, whatever it is there, one is my salesman wise last three years data. One is my product wise last three years data. One is my customer wise last three years data. Three charts are there and this is the slicer, but this slicer is not connected to this chart right now because that is not connected to the pivot table first. So I need to go and check what is this pivot table name? So first I'll go for pivot table options. This is my pivot table number 14. So when I go and check that pivot table 14, I need to go for slicer right click over here and report connections and pivot table number 14 also I need to connect. So it is connected because I have copied and pasted. That's why it is connected. Now I need to confirm this. I confirmed now when I go and click OK. If I need to see the data of Canada, this is what the status of Canada. If I want to see Russia, all these three charts are showing. Can you see now? Yeah. So this is what you have to do the exercise when you want to showcase multiple charts. So when you do the auto fit, what is happening? Uh, if we extend the data, it won't go or how this will happen? The auto fit something we did, right? Yeah, auto fit the formatting for pivot table to display. Charts is not going to be a problem, only no, the no, pivot no, table. Not for charts, for the pivot table only. No, okay. like what will happen? It won't extend or? No, 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 no. It will automatically change. Suppose say now my data is of power auto world. I am extending my column width so that I can showcase the details. Right oh, okay. now, if I go and deactivate this, suppose say pivot table options, I have not deactivated. I am keeping it on. Mm -hmm. Now, whenever I go for refreshing the things, just see what is happening if I go and deactivate this. OK, now this is there. I have today. I have just did this. OK, okay. now when I go for refreshing this pivot table, automatically it is again changing the column. But can you uh, see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, yeah. So this option should not repeatedly doing because I have already spent my time for formatting. So this, this should be the final formatting. I have Correct. confirmed okay. for okay. that reason. I have to go and deactivate mm -hmm. these options. Okay. This is so All right. So I believe pivot table number 10, how to work around with multiple pivot tables and the pivot charts and how to connect the slicers with multiple pivot tables. We got the basic understanding. So taking your live data, keep practicing about all these things, people. This pivot session, whatever yeah. today's, whatever you have learned, that alone, if you utilize the time perfectly in your workplace and you're able to give all this playboard, that's a great achievement. So that itself, it is a return for your investment. Trust me. Everything is necessary. Whatever this for 16 hours training you are going to learn, everything is necessary, but this day three is very, very crucial. So taking the live data, you know your data better. You know who is your target audience. Techniques remains the same. Only thing is you have to play around and who is looking for what kind of data, what kind of report you have to present it. And trust me, Whomever you are going to present it, he is going to be surprised. Is it a really a Excel report or it's a report of Power BI? People will be having a confusion. Trust me. Mm -hmm. So if you know your tool perfectly, you can make a lot of difference at your workplace. People don't explore. That is the only trouble. Fine then. So any other queries from anybody people, whatever we discussed? No, so far. Fine. So this is it from our day three. OK, so as I was suggesting, keep practicing. That is very, very essential. One element without practice, you can't get a hang on those topics and keep exploring, exploring the things. If you have any queries, I'm there to support. Don't worry about it. And for your information, this is not end of your pivot table. And this is just. 5% of the pivot table. Think about it. Rest of 95% how it would be. If this is 5%. Yeah. So there is always a next level learning. Now if you believe OK, Prabhas, I am done with this. Whatever you have taught me where to go and to expand my skills. I told you in day one some 10 website names. If you remember a notepad file I have already shared with you. Go to those websites and enhance your skill. Now what is the next level of learning? So next level of learning for pivot table is power pivot. So you can see yeah. on my screen there is a tab called power pivot. 
So what is this power pivot about? This is nothing but connecting the data modeling. Like we have the files of different different location. One is in C drive, one is in D drive, one is in E drive, one is in my common shared network, one is in my cloud. Now, ideally, if I want to prepare a pivot, what we do, we copy paste all the data, we create a master data and we keep creating the pivot table. Do you all agree? Yes. But here in Power Pivot, what we can do people, we are not going to copy paste. We are not going to bring those files from that location. It will be there in the same location, but we'll create the connection. So instead of doing the application of formula functions and all, we'll be creating the data modeling or data connections. And those connections, whenever you update the existing files, your pivot also will be getting updated because the real time connections is built over there. And the beauty of option, this beautiful option of pivot table or power pivot is you can directly transform your data into a different different KPI dashboards. So yeah. creating the data model, you can transform the data into KPI dashboards. And here we have an option called different different measures or different different over here. The DAX functions or formulas will be learning. So those things when we go for exclusive pivot session only for the corporates, we customize the module. But yes, for your information, this is the next level of learning. So don't confine your limit up to this. Always try to explore whenever time permits. Go and learn. Not able to get power. Power Sorry. Not able to take power to work. No, it will not come. It will not come by default. You have to activate this. So this this tab will come from your file menu. If you're interested to activate this tab, go for it. File menu, you have a options tab. If you go to options, there is an option called add-ins. Able to see? Yes. And in add-ins, when you click in the bottom, Excel add-ins one drop-down is there. Can you see a drop-down Excel add-ins? Yes, sir. If you activate that drop-down, there is an option called COM add-ins. COM add-ins. You have to select that and click the go button. And when you click the go button, whatever the add-ins comes with Microsoft Office package, it will be listed. And if you see Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel is there and the checkbox is not activated, you got to activate this. And click OK. So when you click OK, the new tab will generate over here called Power Pivot. See, it's more or similar to the uh, Power, Power BI. Yeah, it's not about more or similar in Power BI in the back end. These two things are working. One is called Power Pivot and not one is called Power Query. Power Query, yeah. Yeah. Where so, you can clean the data and all. Right. So Power Query will be doing the data transformation, data cleansing. Power Pivot will yeah. be doing the data creation or data Connection. modeling or data connections. Connections, yeah. Yes. So now I got the I got the power pivot install. Now we got visible. I got a new KPI. Not to KPI. No, no, it's not direct as it is. That is a different technology altogether. We cannot go and directly bring it to power pivot. So power pivot first you need to do the data connections and you have to build the connections first. That data modeling is there one different concept altogether. I just showed you for information. We are not going to discuss power pivot over here. Okay, sir. But if you click on the KPIs, you said there'll be something to be connected. No, sir. A connection purpose and click on key. No, no, I told you can directly transform your data into KPI dashboards from Power Pivot. For that, this okay. option is ready made available. I mean, we have spent a lot of time to create a dashboard for an example, but in Power Pivot, we have a ready made option. If you have the ready made Power Pivot connected data, you can transform into a KPI dashboard. Let me just show it uh, once. Again. Sorry. Can you show it once? Like, you know, it will take time. It will take time. It is not just to put the formula and get the answer, Vignesh. That's what I told you. You can go through our sites. I told you, if you remember, 10 website names I have listed. If you look at our Learn Excel free, you can go to all these websites. If you want to learn Power Pivot, Power Query, everything you will be finding. Don't worry about it. That's why I'm just giving the list of sites. Okay. So whenever time permits, go to that and you'll be getting the entire knowledge about Power Pivot, even even Power Query as well, Power BI as well. But only thing is, I mean, whatever the questions you are getting, a bit hard to get the answers immediately. You have to drop the questions in the forum 
and somebody from expert is available, they will be answering your question. But as a knowledge point of view, if you want to expand your skills, these are the best sites. OK, OK, sir. Right. right. All right, friends, so this is it from our day three. If you have any queries or doubts, please feel free to ask. Hope yeah, it was informative. Yeah, obviously. And I, I will send this uh, the file that uh, just. Ah, you showed me in the computer. afternoon. You please send it across. Let me first understand your data better, and then I'll be guiding yeah. you with the best formulas. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, data too, because now I have learned uh, uh, this pivot table and all. So mm -hmm. I would go through the on that uh, way actually, because it's sure. very easy to like get the data in a table format and uh, creating a dashboard. True. 